What's going on everyone? It's Jesse. You guys are on my uh, Facebook page, Painting with Jesse. Today we've got a really cool event. We're going to be painting, drawing and painting Jack and Sally. Uh, from Nightmare Before Christmas, give me a moment while I find the feed on my Facebook. It always takes me a little moment. Here we go. Looks like we're, looks like I'm there. Fantastic. That didn't take very long. It usually does. So I'm here a little bit early to answer any questions you guys might have. Uh, the questions fly really quickly uh, through the comment section, so forgive me if I don't see anybody's question pop up. I will do my very best to get to all of you. Uh, we're going to get started pretty quickly right at about 4 o'clock. What's going on, Cherish Longo? First one to comment. How's it going? Uh, Laquan, Laquan Sellers, how's it going? Rosemary Medrano, how's it going, everyone? So a couple of things I want to tell everyone before we get started. Uh, do not click on any links that pop up in the comment section. Uh, we've got a bunch of scammers that like to pop on these videos and they comment in the links in the, they put links in the comment section trying to take you guys to a different website. Supposedly, they're telling people that the feed, the live feed to this event is on that link. So, they, so you go over there and then they try to charge you. I think they're basically trying to rip you off. So be really careful with clicking on any links in the comment section, okay? I want to make sure you guys are all aware that those are not links that you guys need to be touching, okay? Stay away from those. Everything happens here under Painting with Jesse. So comments are flying by. Like I said, hopefully you guys are all really excited. I'm excited. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw this piece first, okay? So the first thing you're going to be needing is a pencil and an eraser. We're not going to get started right away. We're going to be starting in about... about slightly after four o'clock. So you guys got time to get yourselves your pencil, eraser, piece of paper, canvas. I'm gonna be drawing this and then painting it afterwards, okay, all on this session, um, on the canvas, on the 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're gonna be painting along with me, I don't know what kind of paints you're gonna be using, but I'm gonna be using acrylic paints. And I'll go over the colors in a little bit, um, but you guys can see the colors that are gonna be needed up by looking at the painting itself, okay? so. So just making sure you guys are all aware that I am going to be teaching you guys how to draw this. And then uh, the second half will be us painting it together. Now, a lot of you have asked me, is this video going to be available for later viewing? It is. Once the live session is over, you're going to be able to jump on here anytime afterwards, before the end of October, okay, till the end of October, I should say. This video will be available for you to watch whenever you'd like, right? So if you want to watch the recorded version of it, you will get a chance to but all of my previous videos that I've done are on the live tab on the main page. So if you guys are looking for a video that's been done in the past, simply go to the lives tab on the main page, click on that, you can see a whole bunch of videos pop up. This one will be no different. This one will be available for you guys to watch later, okay? Donna Baker, how's it going? Hello. Every once in a while, well, guys, I will look at the comment section. Whoever's, uh, you know, commenting as I look down there is who I'm going to say hello to. Uh, Maria Spalin, awesome, first time here. Any of you guys are, I'm sure there's plenty of you guys that's the first time you're painting with me. Uh, I want to say welcome to all of you. And then for all of you that have done events with me in the past, I really appreciate you guys coming back. So thank you to all of you. Uh, I have lots of fun on this page with you guys. I'm uh, hoping that you guys can have some fun with me today. Also, Susie Trude, and I, I didn't catch your, your state. Uh, Maine, uh, let's see, wow, everything's, everything's flying by so quickly. So I'm sorry, I, I meant to come on earlier to answer questions, but they're flying by so fast, I'm not getting a chance to see them. So for those of you that are gonna be sticking, uh, sticking through the whole process with me today, the later in the video uh, that you're still here and you start answering, you start asking questions, you, I, there's a better chance that I'm gonna see your question or your comment, your hello, etc. So if you're sticking around, if you're asking any questions right now, just know that later on I'll be able to see them. Okay? Let's see. First time member. Who was that? <laughs> again, I'm not even I'm not even able to do it. Uh, anyway, once again, folks, just want to make sure that everybody knows we're going to be drawing first. So pencil and eraser, make sure you guys get that ready. Uh, also, if you guys, some of you requested a template, a cutout. I didn't make one of those available for this video, but what I did post in the comments is the picture of the main painting, this right here. I posted a picture of it and I explained if you guys wanted to print it out and cut anything out to make into a template, you could do that, right? It's really easy to print this out and you make, make a template out of Sally or, or Jack's head or Oogie Boogie, whatever you wanted 
you can simply cut that out and you'll be using that as a template. Okay, so again, just want to make sure you guys understand that you can do that. Uh, and uh, anyhow, but I didn't make anything officially available as far as actual templates. There are some of our paintings that we do that I'll make up that I will make templates for, and then I'll email those out to people that request them to, uh, from me. Really quick, let me run off the screen. I'm going to grab the painting that we did yesterday for those of you that might be interested. Last night, for any of you Hocus Pocus fans out there, last night we did this, this Hocus Pocus painting. Uh, the video is still up for those of you that would like to go back and watch it. I, I did make stencils for this that I sent out via email. If you guys need the stencils, would like to, um, would like to participate. I teach you guys how to draw the piece, uh, how to draw everything on here during the video. But if you wanted to use a template, you can email me at paintingwithjesse, J-E-S-S-E, at gmail.com, and I'll send those templates out to you. Again, the video is still available uh, through the end of October. Okay, so anyway, guys, let's see. Uh, not just yet, guys. We're not jumping on until we've still got a couple minutes before 4 o'clock. In a moment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip everything around. I'm going to bring the camera close so you guys get a close-up of everything that I'm doing, okay? I'm going to be painting with acrylic paints. I got a bunch of these acrylic paints back here. Uh, the, the colors that I'm going to be using are dark blue, light blue. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Knocking paint over. Light blue. I've got some green on here. I've got some black, red, orange, yellow, white, and brown. Those are the colors that I'm using. Once again, dark blue, light blue, white, brown, orange, yellow, red, black, and then green. Okay. If you got other colors that you want to use, it's up to you. Everything on this is optional. Uh, so if you guys want to get creative and add some stuff to your painting that's not on here, absolutely. Somebody asked about uh, uh, asked about zero. Uh, if we can add zero to the painting, if there's time, we'll add zero. I don't know that we're gonna have time, but we'll add zero if uh, if uh, you know we have time. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and flip things around here in just a moment. But let me see if I could take a look and see what we got here. Uh, so my volume's down over here, guys. I'm not here. I don't have my volume up. Uh, my volume is completely down over here. I don't hear anything. So if you guys are getting feedback, I saw a comment on here that there's uh, feedback. I've got no, um, my volume is not up. In other words, I've got the feed on the laptop, more of a visual. So um, I'm not, but yeah, there's no sound on my end. So if you guys are getting feedback, you may want to look at that on your end. Okay. But all right, Julie Ogden from Australia. Awesome. 7.30 a.m. in Australia. Fantastic. Uh, Gene Ed says, I'm not getting any feedback or echo. Okay, good. That's how it should be. All right, guys. Uh, let's see. It is 4 o'clock. Once again, just going to go over this. Let me go over the rules really quickly. How I do this. When we start, I do a step on my canvas up front. Camera's nice and close. You're able to see everything. Okay? Uh, as I do a step, I give you guys a little time to do the step yourselves. Right, so a minute, two minutes, it just depends on the co uh, complexity of the step. But so I do a step, then I give you guys a little time to do the step. That's the entire process all the way through. There is no rushing this. Please do not request that I go any faster than when I'm going. I'm trying to maintain a pace that's pretty average for most pe people to be able to keep up. If you start to fall behind, do your best to stay caught up. Okay, it's really important, especially with the drawing part of it. If you're planning on drawing and painting, the drawing part of it is important that you stay on, you know, stay with us all the way through. Um, so do your best. I understand that for some of you, it's a little hard to, you know, you'd like to take your time, which is okay, but do your best. And then once again, I want to repeat, since it's four o'clock, for those of you that want to do the painting later, maybe you don't have time to finish with me today. You, you're going along with me and then part way you have to leave for whatever reason, or maybe you just simply can't join today. The video will be available after the live session is over. If you go to the live tab under my painting with Jesse Page, you'll see all the past videos that we've done. This one will be there as soon as the live session is over. This video will be there. You'll be able to watch this at your leisure, pause, go forward, back it up, etc. through the end of October, okay? So I know I got that question probably 100 times uh, throughout the week. The video will be available for you guys to watch at a later time, okay? Uh, Secondly, um, I want to make sure that you guys are, are aware, scammers like to come in and post links in the comment sections to try, in the comment section to try to take you to another website. 
They're trying to charge you for the event. They're trying to take your information, steal your, you know, important information. I don't know exactly what. I know that they try to charge some people for the event. Do not click on those links. Ignore those. Okay, I've got a friend, Ariel, that's on here uh, that's watching, uh, trying to help me out by banning any, any of those scammers. But we can only do so much. Sometimes they slip through. So just be careful. Do not click on any links that say they're going to take you to the live feed of this event. Everything happens here under Painting with Jesse. Okay? So, all right, guys. Once again, get your pencils ready. Erasers ready. We're going to draw first. Let me flip around to the front. Let me flip everything over to the front. I'm going to be drawing this on a 16 by 20 inch canvas, which is basically the same size as the original. Okay, so let you guys know you guys can do this on whatever you'd like. If you got paper, if you got uh, a wood board, maybe you, you're using construction paper, whatever it is that you're using, that's what you're going to use and that's perfectly fine. You may have to adjust the size, right? Depending on what it is that you're using and what size it is, etc. You'll have to make some size modifications, but you'll understand how to do that as we go along. Okay? We're going to go step by step. I do a step and then you guys copy me. Do your best to copy me. Do not stress out, especially if you don't consider yourself a good drawer. As long as you're watching, paying attention to what I'm doing, you're going to be okay. Okay? So hold on one second. I'm going to bring the camera forward so you guys can all see, get a better view of what it is that I'm going to be doing as I do it. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to have both the original painting and my canvas in view. When I need to, I'll scoot it forward a little bit more if I, if I have to do that. I'm not so sure yet that will that'll be necessary throughout the process, but maybe. Ask your questions in the comments. I'll do my best to get to every one of those questions. So I got my pencil right here. Got my little pencil with an eraser. 16 by 20 inch canvas. I understand that a whole lot of you are drawing on something different. Different size, might just be regular. Uh, drawing paper, etc., etc. Okay, no big deal. Here's what I'd like to do first. We're going to start with some basic drawing lessons first. Anytime I'm going to draw something and you want to, obviously you can make your own choices, but you want to have your canvas, paper, etc., so that it's vertically, it's longer vertically than it is wide, right? Unless you've got a square piece of paper or square canvas, etc., and then you're just going to make adjustments uh, based on, the, on those dimensions but vertical let's take a look at what we're going to be drawing here i like to block everything out first i'm going to be drawing very lightly at the beginning you guys want to do the same thing your pencil marks should be light so that if you have to correct anything you can very easily you can just go in there and erase it not till you have the everything how you want it do you want to go in and darken things up okay so but let's block everything out first up in this right hand corner somewhere you're going to put jack's head now all i'm doing is drawing myself a nice little kind of a lemon shaped rough circle where i'm leaving some space over in the left hand corner for the moon and oogie boogie okay so again nice little lemon shaped circle up in here you're going to be putting sally's face over here in a moment so don't so you want to make sure you leave a little space this isn't going to be the exact size right from the get-go. We're going to make adjustments to everything as we go. Again, right now, we're just blocking things out so that you visually know where everything's going to be and so that you know that you have enough space for everything on your canvas. Okay? So once you got yourself a nice little rough lemonish shaped lemon-shaped circle, you're going to come over here, give it a little space in between. We got a kind of a squarish shape for Sally's head. So again, look at, look at how I hold my pencil nice and loose. I'm not stressing perfect dimensions or shape or anything like that. Again, right now we're just blocking things out. So I'm gonna do a little bit kind of a, kind of a rectangle shape. Most of you can't really see my pencil lines. I mean, they're probably really light. They're purposefully light, not so you guys struggle to see them, but in a little while when we start to make adjustments, you're gonna be, you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, let me see if I'm going to try to darken this up just a little bit because I'm looking at the camera. Yep, it's kind of kind of uh, 
I'm just going to darken these up a little bit more on my end so you guys can see. Okay. So I got a little rough rectangle-ish or, or, or square shape right here. I got a nice little circle up here. Again, this is Sally's head. That's Jack's head. So not leave a nice little space in between. Okay, again, nice and easy. No stressing about it. I'm going to see if I can get you guys a slightly better view of everything by bringing this forward a tiny bit. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and darken this up just a bit. Give you guys a better visual. Again, everything's nice and rough right now. All right. Okay. So we got Jack's head up in this area of the canvas. We got Sally's head. Again, this is very rough. Don't stress about dimensions or anything like that. We're just blocking things out. Later, we'll come in and add more detail. Up in here, we got a nice little circle, upper left-hand corner for Oogie Boogie. A little smaller than both the heads, right? So just kind of work on that. We're just putting in the shape for the, for the moon. We're not putting in Oogie Boogie at the moment. Jack's head, Sally's head, Oogie Boogie. And again, folks, later on, we will darken this up some more. Okay, we will be darkening this up. Take your time, have fun with it. Don't stress out on me. Promise you everything's gonna be okay. Just listen to what I'm saying, follow along. Watch the way I hold my pencil. Do your best to make, mimic me and everyone's gonna be just fine. Okay, moon, Jack's head, Sally's head. Let's look at Sally's shoulders. They're at a slight angle like this. Okay, so right here, you're gonna give me a little bit of a space for her neck. Then you're just gonna draw a nice little line at a slight angle, it goes like that. Don't worry about how, how wide it is. It doesn't have to be perfectly as wide as her shoulders are currently in the, or, or the finished product. Just give me a nice little line that's a little, a little bit wider than her head. Once you've, once you've done this, you're gonna come over here. Same thing with Jack. You're gonna give me some space for the neck probably about close to, if this is Sally's face right here, about the middle part of it, his shoulders are about right there. Again, all we're doing is blocking our shapes in to make sure that we have enough space for everything. Don't stress out, folks. Like I said, have fun with it. If you're learning how to draw, well then. That's what this is for, okay? I promise you in a little bit, it's gonna be easier to see everything. Right now, I'm keeping everything nice and light because we're going to be doing some erasing. You also want to be doing these really light on your end. This is not the finished product, so you want to be able to erase lines as you make corrections. All right, let me look at some of the comments. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to get yours all done. To get all of this blocked in, I know sometimes we need a little bit of time. But in a moment, I'm going to start, we're going to start adding some detail to our piece. Feel free to say hello to each other in the comments. If you guys know, if you guys have friends on here, maybe you guys are, you know, painting different parts of the country, wherever, whatever country you're in, uh, or you guys are in the same state, same city, but not together, say hello. Say hello to me. Tell me who you're painting with. Laurie Stewart, newbie from Illinois. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ash Usman, hello. Leslie Newland, you got it. The comments are still flying by pretty quickly, but it's a lot slower than at the beginning. <laughs> All right, Matthew Lucero, Texas in the house. Natalia Duran, Argentina, what's happening in Argentina? I think my first Argentine. I don't think I've, I've had anybody from Argentina, or at least not anybody Say they're from Argentina in the comments. So that's pretty dang cool. Palmdale, California in the house. Nanette Falls. Hello. All right, guys. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Things are going to start getting a little bit uh, a little bit more complicated now. But again, everybody take a breath. Relax. We're having fun with this. There's no stressing allowed here. You'll be able to come back and do this as many times as you want. If you decide you want to come back and try it again tomorrow or the next day. So just relax. Or if you miss something and you want to go over it again, the video is going to be available for you. 
All right, so here we go. Now we're gonna start to add some detail to our piece. Now it's gonna start looking more like a paint, like a drawing. So we got Jack's head up in here. You're gonna make some little adjustments. We're gonna start with the top of Jack's head, okay? Top of Jack's head is pretty rounded up in here. Now I'm gonna, once I get my line correct, I'll start to darken it up a little bit so you guys can see what I've got. Okay, I'm kind of using the original circle that I created at the beginning as my guide. So we're up in here, nice little line. That, my friends, is the top of Jack's head, okay? So, and then from there, from this point, Jack's head actually drops off pretty steep, right? It's not a, not a, not a perfect angle, where it's not, it's not a pointy angle. It's, it rounds out, but it starts to drop off pretty dramatically. So from right in here, we're just gonna go down. Again, folks, I do a step, and then I give you guys a little time to do it, okay? So. Again, you want to do your best to keep up, right about right there. Top of Jack's head, front of Jack's face. And from right here in a moment, it's going to start to round back towards the back of the head. Karen and T uh, Temple, hey from Chemo, your videos are my lifesaver. Ah, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to help. Cindy Stevenson, Womack, watching tonight, printing with my daughter tomorrow, oh, painting with my daughter tomorrow to knock off the stress from a week teaching. She loves Jack and Sally. Thanks so much for this. My pleasure, everybody. My pleasure. Here we go. So underneath, we're going to come around to the back of Jack's head. Now, this line right here is going to be pretty rounded, and of course, it meets this line up back in here. So you can start from up here, come down, or you can start from here, work your way back. Do not darken your lines until you're happy with them, okay? So that way, again, if you need to make adjustments, you can make adjustments. Now, I would also still recommend that your lights, your lines stay relatively light. You don't want to darken them, so, darken them up so much that when you paint over them, if you have to paint over them, like in here in the face, that they don't come in through your paint. If you're painting with acrylic paint, acrylic paint can be a little bit transparent so you might be able to see some of those lines coming through so just kind of just be careful don't uh don't make your lines too dark regardless i'm going to do a little bit of an adjustment over here notice i take my eraser and I just come on through and erase a little bit a lot of people don't like to erase when they draw it's all part of the creative process do not worry about uh, having to erase you have to erase just do it just going to make this a little bit a little bit bigger his head's a little bit bigger Just a touch. There we go. Now, if you guys notice, if I come in here and erase a little bit, the lines on the inside, are, I can still see them a little, but I'm not too worried about that. As long as they're light, they're going to come out with the paint when I paint, put paint over them. All right, there we go. Jack's head's right there. We're going to stay with Jack for a bit. His neckline is right in here, right? We already kind of uh, we blocked it out earlier. His neckline is right, not his neckline, but his shoulder line is right in here. We're going to take our pencil right back down in, back in here near the back of the head. We're going to draw a nice little angled line that comes down and connects to this line that we did earlier. Okay, and then we're going to come up to the front and do the same thing. The idea is not to try to make an, well, you can. You can try to make an exact repl replica as best as you can, but don't stress everybody's drawing and painting is going to look a little bit different in the end. Okay, so do your best, but don't freak out and go, oh my God, we gotta, I gotta do exactly what Jesse's doing. It's not what this is about. We're having some fun. So we got Jack's neck in place, right in there. So right here where, where our light shoulder line is, we're gonna drop a little line back in here, nice and light. Okay, down, maybe slightly angled back towards the back of the canvas, doesn't really matter too much. So this is his little shoulder a little bend for his shoulder. From right here, we're gonna draw a line that goes out and back, where his arm, this is the top of his arm. Take a moment, catch up a little bit, make some adjustments as you need to. Jenny Riemann says, can I view and paint another time? If so, how do I do that? Yep, you sure can, folks. Again, I'll repeat this as many times as I need to throughout. If you guys see any comments, oh, so really quick before I do that, if you guys see any comments, uh, come up, 
that you guys can answer that you guys know the answer to because you've been painting with me in the past or you were part of the discussion board and saw my answer to some of the questions that were coming up. If you guys know the answer, please feel free to answer some of your fellow artists, painters, fellow participants, okay? Please feel free to, to answer for them. I don't always see all the questions come up. But anyhow, uh, okay, Ariel's answering for me. Thank you, Ariel. But yes, the video will be available afterwards. As soon as the live session's over, it's available under the live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page. Okay, so we're gonna come over here. We're gonna draw the line, the bottom part of the line for the, for the arm. Okay, so this is the shoulder, here's the arm, and then from right in there, we're gonna draw a line that comes forward. Well, let me take a little step back. I'm over at an angle and I wanna make sure that, I'm, that I got this right. There we go. I'm gonna draw this down and forward towards Sally's, towards Sally's body. Now, the only thing I'm gonna darken up in here is this line for the shoulder, my arm, and then the side of Jack's coat. I'm not gonna darken this up in here because we're gonna be putting up, putting that big bat, right? He has that bat on top of there. And then I am going to darken up my neck, my little neckline. Again, keep yours light, folks. Do not worry about how dark I'm making mine. The only reason I'm making them as dark as I am is that you, so you guys can see what I've got on the canvas. You wanna keep everything as light as possible. If you're painting, right? If you're gonna be painting over this, whether you're using, uh, I know some of you are, use, are using colored uh, watercolors, some of you might even be using markers, colored pencils. The only reason why I'm going dark on this is so you guys can see everything at home, all right? Okay, moving on, moving on. For now, I'm gonna leave Jack alone. I'm gonna come over and do Sally's, Sally's shape, okay? So again, we got the, we got the neck, we got the face shape right in here. So we're gonna start up on top. We're gonna do her head. Her head has kind of a curved top to it. Does this. I'm using my original square shape as my template in a sense. Okay, so a nice little curved line on top. It drops forward at an angle a little bit. Comes down to about where her cheekbone is. And if you notice, if you wanna use, if you wanna use um, Jack's shoulder a little bit as your alignment, as your kind of like um, uh, your, your guidepost, if you will. Comes down a little bit further than where his shoulder line is and then it angles back. So this is her little cheekbone, angles back towards the chin. Very subtle angle that comes down and then from there, the little chin is a little bit on the rounded, rounded but pointy and comes back towards the back of her head. Okay, like that. This line in here, I'm gonna leave it a little bit light because this is where my hair is gonna be and I, I may have to move this a little bit. There we go. There's Sally's head shape. Every once in a while, take a little step back, look at everything from a distance, make sure you've got it all in place. And if you need to make adjustments, feel free to do so. Megan Melton from Wichita, Kansas. How's it going? Josie Warren, I'm glad you're loving this. I'm loving it too. Cynthia Sama, hello from Coral Springs. What's up, Cynthia? All right, thank you guys. I see some of you guys are answering questions for me in the comment section. I really do appreciate it. There's a lot of you on here and a lot of questions are gonna be coming up. And like I said, if you know the answer, please answer for me. I really do, do appreciate it. All right, here we go. We got Sally's head. We're not doing anything with the hair just yet. We're gonna go right down to the neck. So right about in here, you're gonna give me two little lines to come down. They're pretty straight. They're pretty straight, right? They're not at an angle like Jack's neck was. I mean, it could have a little bit of an angle. No big deal if it does. Now, Sally's neck isn't as long as Jack's, right? He has a really long neck. And if you guys notice, I've already made her neck pretty long. If I go any further where I come down to meet the neckline or the original shoulder line, that's too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my shoulder line. I'm gonna make a little adjustment. My shoulder line comes up a little bit, okay, just a bit. So again, it avoids me having to make her neck so long that it, that it doesn't look like Sally anymore, or it's not Sally's neck anyway. So I, instead I bring up my shoulder 
and maybe I can even adjust my shoulder angle a bit. You guys notice how I'm doing this? Very, very light. It's more of a rough sketch to start, and then we slowly define it. And once I've got what, I look, what looks like the right length, now I can go ahead and bring this line for the neck down and back, just like that. This will all be erased in a little while, so I'm not too worried about it. In the front, I bring this forward and up. Shoulder line comes out a little bit. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go and erase some of this so you guys can get a better view of what the actual line looks like. There we go. Now from here, I'm just gonna curve this over and down it comes. There we go. And if your uh, back part of Jack touches this line or it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. They can intersect or maybe they don't. Not that big of a deal. Back here, I'm just gonna take this shoulder and angle it down and back a little bit. There we go. What's up, Rosa Montana from Jackson, Wyoming? You see the message that you were live and able to paint right now since working, but you're my background music. <laughs> Good choice of background music, Rosa. Awesome. Christina Prescott. Prescott, my son is loving this. Awesome. Fantastic. So I'm, I, I've had a few requests for a Coraline video, and we're going to be doing a Coraline video sometime soon. Okay, lots of requests for that one. All right, guys. So we got Sally's face, Jack's or Jack's head, Sally's head, general shape for uh, Sally's body, and we got the general shape for Jack's uh, body as well. Here, I'm just going to bring a little line that comes down, really light. Keep again, keep your lines light. We're going to make some adjustments here in a little while, but now we've got the general shape for everything. Jack, uh, Sally's hair is going to come down. It's going to drape down around the sides. We're actually going to do that now. We're going to do the outline for her head first for her hair. Here at the top, especially towards the front of her forehead, the line, the outline for her hair is, comes really close to the face, drops down in the front, and it just follows the front of her, the line of her face. And then it comes down and meets down here at the shoulder. Okay, it meets her shoulder right in here. Then back here, it simply comes back, comes out a little bit further than it does in the front, and then it drops and slightly curls down and in towards that shoulder. All right? So, how's everybody doing? How are things looking? I'm going to pull back a little bit on the camera because it looks like I am missing some of the detail towards the bottom. Just now noticed that. Okay, not a lot, but a little bit. So there we go. Laura Madonna, this is great with my grandkids. Thanks for the best. Buy my ladybug. Ah, oh, cool. So, so guys, again, I'm doing. I'm going to do my best to maintain a pace that I think most of you can keep up with. Everybody's going to be is going to be doing this at slightly different paces, right? At some of you're a little faster, some of you're a little slower, but we don't want to be here all night, right? It could we could sit here and draw this out for hours, five hours, if you want, if we wanted to. Uh, most of you aren't going to have that kind of time. We have a lot of detail to add, right? The eyes, the nose, the mouth, oogie boogie. So especially with this part of it, you want to do your best to keep up. If you, if you happen to fall too far behind, let's say we've got the drawing all in place and I'm ready to paint um, and you're really far behind, keep up for as long as you can and then just keep in mind that this video will be available for you to come back to later and maybe continue where you left off. Okay, but yeah, I'm gonna try to go at a pace again that's not super fast, but I, I can't go so, so slow that we're doing this all day long. Uh, time flies and we're really quickly going to three, four hours if we're not careful, okay? So anyway, just keep that in mind. Do your very best uh, to, to keep up. So, okay, 
We've got one last little thing that I want to add right here where the hair comes down. I'm going to bring this down and back so it connects to the back uh, part of Sally's shoulder over here. I'm going to go ahead and use my eraser here a little bit, erase some of, my, some of the rough lines from earlier. Most of this, keep in mind, most of these are going to be covered up with paint, so I'm not too concerned. I just don't want them super dark. There we go. So how's everybody doing? Let me know if we're ready to start adding some detail. We're going to start adding some detail to Jack's face. Then we're going to move over to Sally, right? And then we're going to go back to Jack's body. We're going to add the, the, um, his coat, the bat. Then we're going to add the details to Sally and everything else. Boogie Boogie's probably going to be last. But um, let me know, guys. Are we ready to go? Give me some thumbs up letting me know that you guys are ready to go. In the meantime, as you guys are kind of catching up a little bit, I'm going to... I'm going to reach over and take a little drink of my drink. <clears throat> All right. I'm seeing quite a few readies pop up. Thumbs up. Everybody's saying let's go. Or lots of you saying let's go. So here we go. Let's look at Jack. We got Jack up in here. He's got a nice long mouth, right? Uh, his mouth stitched up and his big old eyeballs. We're going to start with his eyes. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera forward just a tiny bit. Looks like I got some space around the edges that I can fill up, give you guys a slightly better view. So we're going to start with the eye over here, the, the eye on the outside or the right side of the canvas. So his eye, if you were to drop down, this eyeball, this eye is almost directly in the middle of his head. If you were to Draw the center of his head. That eyeball is about right here. But that's just an about, okay? Don't stress too much. If um, yours is slightly off either way, it's not going to make much of a difference. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with the top part, so the eyebrow part of Jack's eye. So nice little curved line that comes down. He looks, you know, he always, Jack most of the time looks like he's kind of angry. There's, al there's almost like an angry eyebrow. From there, again, Light pencil marks, everyone, right? I want to remind you guys, keep your pencil lines light. We're going to curve back, goes under, and then a, a big, sharp turn up towards the eyebrow. Once you've done your eye, you got the eye in place, take a little step back, make any adjustments that you need to. For example, I can come in here and make this a little bit bigger. Just a little bit, don't need much. And then I can take my pencil and erase these lines in here because I don't need them anymore. Okay, let me go ahead and darken that up. All right. So you guys work on that for a moment. Dima Frost, Wichita, 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 Kansas in the house. Freezing cold outside. Ah, yeah. Whoops, I lost the light here for a moment. Let me bring that back up. Well, keep, keep warm there, <clears throat> Dima. Make sure you keep warm. Hopefully, you guys got a little fireplace or something going. But all right, eyeball. I mean, eye. Eye opening, right? He's a skull. Now, over here in the front, we got the other eye. Now, this one has a curve. We're going to start with the eyebrow. And this eyebrow, so this eye is slightly lower than this eye. You don't want to come across and make them exactly the same uh, height or the, or, or the same level at the top. You want to bring this one down a little bit. He, his, his vision is slightly looking down, right? So this eye needs to be a little further down. So about right over here is where I'm going to start it. We're going to start at the top near the edge of the near the edge of his face, and we're just going to curve this line down. And it's not as big. It's also not as large as this one. It's a little bit smaller because of the perspective, and that line comes up. Sharp turn, comes up. There we go. Again, take a little look. You need to make an adjustment. Make your adjustment. There we go. Bangor, Michigan. Jen and Chloe, how are you? Hudson, Wisconsin has a foot of snow already. Woo! 
Sounds like it's going to be a cold winter. Just making little adjustments, folks. Again, take a little step back. Look at your stuff from a distance. It's easier to see everything. Make your little adjustments if you need to. All right, so we got the eyes in place. You guys got about 30 seconds to get those in place, and we're moving to the, the long mouth. Okay, he's got a long mouth that goes across. Let me take a look at the comments in the moment here in a second. Melanie Shotwell says, mine looks like a capital D. I'm assuming you're talking about the eye. No worry. Leilani Riva says, still hot in California. Where are you in California, Leilani? Today was warm. Where I am, I'm out here in Southern California, about an hour and a half uh, north of San Diego. And it was, it was warm, but the morning was chilly. I came out in the morning, like 6.30, 7 o'clock, and it was 7 o'clock, I think, something like that. It was pretty chilly. It was really nice. But all right, mouth, going to go across, curves back, meets up in here, uh, back in here somewhere. You can actually even mark it off near the back part of the head, somewhere. If you were to take, you know, the middle of your, your eye and go back, that's about where that a line would intersect if you were to draw a line back. So from right here, you can start from the front or from the back, whichever you'd like. But this line comes down, goes forward, big, long, 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 long line that's nice and curved and it touches the outside right it goes all the way and connects to the outside of the face all right let me see if I can erase some of these lines down here a little bit better don't want to confuse any of you okay while we're at it we can go ahead and do the stitches so he's got these little lines that intersect, and you don't have to draw straight lines across the mouth like this. You could if you want, but you could also, probably makes a little cooler effect if you just draw a line that connects, and then the line below it kind of slightly angles a different way, just a little tiny bit, kind of like that. Follow the curve of the mouth, right? As you're curving with the mouth, the angle of your lines change, so they kind of start to do that. There we go. And your jack could have 100 of those. Your jack can have 20, maybe not 100. But your jack can have, you know, as many as you can fit across your smile. There's no set number. Rachel Dawson says, Sacramento, California, tank top weather. Inglewood, 79 degrees and cloudy. That sounds like good, that's a good temperature right there. All right, let's look at the nose. We had a couple, they look like little, like little teardrops almost, kind of, kind of wide or uh, wide at the base. Whoops, whoops. A little too far forward. Uh, no, that was actually pretty good. So here we go. The one in the front is a little smaller than the one to the side. Or just a little bit. Again, the perspective. Because of the perspective. If you draw them the same size, it won't have the same look. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there on Jack. <clears throat> okay, Debbie, sorry about that. Yeah, maybe maybe something with the internet on your end. Um, but yeah, folks, again, I just want to remind you, and I know you probably all have heard me already say this or other people in the comments, but for those of you who might be just kind of stopping in kind of quick, the video will be available later. As soon as the live session's over, you can come back and do it again or do it for the first time or come back to wherever you left off. Okay, we got Jack's face. Let's jump over to Sally. And same thing, we're going to start with, the, with our big old eye over here on the left. Now, the eye is not in the middle. Maybe, the, maybe this part of the eye right here is about where the middle of her face would be. If you were to draw a line across, this line right here for this eye would start right about at the middle. So maybe you could do that. You have an imaginary line across the middle of her face, and that's where you want to start this eye. And it's, of course, towards the back. Maybe I'm going to go a little bit higher. Big, nice curved line underneath. Okay, like that. Sally has really big eyes also. And then top is exactly the same kind of curve. Okay, just like that. Then I want you guys to take a look at the eye in the front. You only see part of it, right? So you're only going to draw part 
of the eye. You're not going to draw a full, complete eye like this one is. And again, take a little step back. If you need to make your eye bigger, please do so. I just know it's a size isn't quite as big as I'd like it to be. So I erase it, and then I do it again. A little bit bigger. Nothing wrong with having to erase, folks. When I come over to the front, if you could see this eye completely, it'd probably be a little smaller than this, just a touch, but slightly higher up, because again, she's also kind of looking up at Jack. So maybe a little bit higher, just a touch higher than this here. Over here, the top part of this eye. Again, you're only, it's also a little, a little shortened. A little bit shortened. So the curve is a little bit steeper than this. Okay, this curve is steeper. It has, this has more of a gradual curve to it. This is a little bit of a steeper drop. And then curve it back towards the front. Okay, something like that. And take a look at your eyes from a distance. If you need to make adjustments, please do so. Again, I, I'm looking at this and I still need to make an adjustment here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I wanna fill up more of her face with it. All right, that's better. Once you've got the eye in place, you want to do a little, she has an eyelid, looks like a little eyeshadow over the top, which a little eyeshadow line on top of there, and then do the same, do the same thing on the other side. All right. All right. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Also, guys, um, I'm going to request that you guys send me pictures of your, of your masterpieces when you're all done. I always like to see what people what people's versions look like so when you guys get a chance when you're all done at the end of it send me pictures please send them to me via messenger painting with jesse at uh here painting with jesse on facebook right same page that you're on just go to the messenger uh copy your paste your picture to that and send it over if you want to send me a picture of you with your painting holding it that'd be fantastic you with your group of friends or whoever it is that you're that you're painting along with that would be super awesome you can also post the picture here in the comment section, but um, but it, that's a lot harder for me to see. I don't get alerts whenever people post stuff on the comments. I only get the alerts when I get them in, in my messenger. All right, here we go. Nose, Sally's little nose is right here. And it just comes down a little bit and then dips back. So it's a very tiny little kind of pointy little nose, but it's subtle. Little line comes down. And then, the, and then there's a little triangle. So there's a line and there's a little triangle. You form a little triangle like this. That's about it for Sally's nose. Nothing fancy. And maybe I need to make this a little bit of a wider triangle. So again, I erase my line and do it again. Just a little bit wider. Okay. Then let's go to her mouth. Actually, I'm going to give you guys a minute, work on the nose for a little bit, 30 seconds or so. I don't want to go too quickly, but in a moment, we're going to do the mouth, and we're going to start with the red part of her lips. Then we'll add the outside lines in a second. All right, let me look through those comments. All right. Ham B. Ergler. Ham Burglar. <laughs> I just caught that. I started saying your name again. I'm like, wait, why did I look familiar? Houston, Texas. My nephew is drawing for us. He's six. Thank you for this activity. You are absolutely welcome. All right, let's look at Sally's mouth. If you were to go directly down from the nose, that's about where the mouth would start. You want to leave, leave a little space for the chin, right? And so the mouth is almost between the chin and the nose, somewhere in the middle, right in here. You can draw a little line, kind of at a slight angle, just to give you a placement for that mouth. Okay, kind of like this. And then from there, let's start with the top lip. Okay, so you guys all know what lips look like. You have a couple little points that do this. The only real thing you, you want to make sure of here is that this peak is a little bit 
or this part of the lip, this half of it, is a little bit higher and then it's also larger. This one's foreshortened a bit, peak is slightly smaller and there's less of it. So this half of the lip is smaller than this half. Once you've got that, you come over, curve, and then connect. For those of you that are interested, I got a good, maybe not a gazillion, probably about 30, 40 other videos on here. I started doing this back in, um, I think it was late March, right when COVID started. I started doing this back in March, and I've done, I started doing one video a week, and then it eventually led to about three videos a week. A week. I have a lot of children's videos up, and then I've got some all ages stuff, kind of like this, uh, up as well. I probably have about 30, maybe 40 videos up. So for those of you that are interested, go check out the live tab on my Painting with Jesse page when you have time, and you'll see a bunch of stuff on there, a bunch of cool stuff. All right, here we go. From right here, we draw a line that goes back, curves up a little bit, and then over on this side, line's a little smaller, and it goes over and it can connect to the side of your face if you want or it can stop short right before once you got that line you want to go ahead and come in here and do the little stitch your little stitches right and you can do little X's on some of these or just little lines that kind of intersect up to you all right we're getting there folks we're getting there we're working our way through this Diana gone. You did Bessie last night, huh? Yeah, that one's a good one. So I've got a, I've got a, a video from a couple months ago. Um, I did a, a cow, really cute little cow with a little um, flower tiara, and we called her Bessie. Anyway, the video's up, and I think Diana's that's what she's referencing. So that's pretty cool. Melanie Shotwell, don't worry, just do your best. Okay, do your best. Again, try to do your best. Practice makes perfect. You can always come back and do this again. So there's always that. All right, guys. We got a little stitch. We got this little scar up in here. Which are, or, um, where she's pieced together. A little line up on top near the corner of her forehead. Give me some little stitch marks. And you're good. We're going to give Sally some beady eyes. Little tiny circles right up in here near the top. She's looking at Jack. I suppose you get, get, get creative and maybe she's looking down or she's looking over the side. Like she's saying, anyways. <laughs> it's up to you guys, wherever you put those eyes, those eyeballs. And then once you got the eyes, give me some eyelashes. Okay, little eyelashes that come up. Be like little V's. Some of the little lines that come up. Kind of do that. When you do the ones for the other eye, they're a little bit smaller, right? Eye smaller, it's a little further away. Kind of like that. <laughs> good, Mel good, Melanie, that's good. Creepy, terrible. Creepy is ter terrible. It is Halloween. It sounds like a good thing. And then Laura Ellis says the same thing. Mine looks terrible, but it's fun. Again, guys, have fun with it. That's the big key to it. Have fun, relax. And yeah, if you guys want to give it a shot again, usually, you know, if you draw something more than once, you start to get the hang of it. It's, it's that practice that makes it a little bit better. Uh, you learn to see, you learn what works and, you know, what doesn't. So, all right. Eyelashes. Let's come down here to the to her to her dress, her body, her clothing. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna she has a, you know she has a little V shape for her neckline. So we're gonna start with that on the two sides of her neck, right over here on one side. You can kind of just draw a nice little V that goes down, and it can go all the way down to the bottom of your canvas or paper, whatever it is, depending on how low you're gonna how how high up the shoulders are for you. But come down a ways and then come over to the other side and do the same thing. Curve it in and give me one of those. Okay. 
Why would a skeleton have eyelashes? Marla Hacker, that is a great question. That is a wonderful question. Maybe they're fake. Maybe you should just add them. Say, hey, I want to have some fake eyelashes on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Great question, though. Fantastic question. All right, so we got the we got the V-neck V-line for that top of the blouse. Now we're going to come over to the side, and we're going to take this line right here where his shoulder is. Whoops. Probably went a little too far out. And I'm going to curve the line back towards the edge a little bit and then connects down to the edge of the canvas. Froggy McFrogson Charbonneau says, my Sally looks kind of like a Bratz doll. Actually, there is some similarity. There is a little bit, little bit of a similarity there. So I think that's pretty normal. Come over to the other side, guys. Come over here. And we're just going to do another line. And this line goes all the way down. This line gives us her shoulder and her arm. She isn't a skeleton. Yeah, I think she's just a, she's a corpse, right? She's a, she's a dead person. Now, Jack, if we gave Jack some eyelashes, well, that's altogether something else. But I would, that would work, too. She's, yeah, she's like Frankenstein, stitched together, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember my, my Nightmare Before Christmas lore. But all right, guys, we have her dress. We got the top part of her top, you know, her, her outfit. We got the shoulders. We can do a little patch right in here. We can also come in if you haven't yet. You can darken up this line, the shoulder, darken that up a little bit. You can take a look at her and refine her chin a little if you need to. And then what you want to do is you want to give her a little, she has a little uh, line right here where she's been stitched up. Okay, so we got that. She's a rag doll. That's right. She's a rag doll. Duh. Jesse, come on. Right in here down the middle. Long. Whoops. Nice long stitch line right in there. Give her a little stitch. Her stitches. Okay. Maybe that's a little too high. We're going to go a little lower with that. And then we got these little, this line here that comes across on each side of her shoulders. Just kind of come down, does this. And then we give some stitch lines as well. Can't forget her stitches. Anna De Leon, I'm loving this. She, you say, sending love from Tennessee. Fantastic. So Guinevere Rayleigh Watson, she's a humanoid rag doll created by Dr. Frankenstein. She's made of various pieces stitched together with dead leaves used as, as stuffing. Wow. Well, I, it's definitely been a while since I've watched this movie. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to watch it again. It's been quite a few years, but definitely such an awesome movie. All right, everybody, take a look at your Sally. Make sure you've got everything. We're about to move on over to Jack, and now this is all gonna move pretty quickly. She's the one that's got the most detail. Jack doesn't have as much, except for his bat. We only have a few lines to make. We're not gonna be worried about all the pinstripes. Those all come in with paint. And then we got Oogie Boogie, and we're good to start painting. So take a look at your Sally. Take a little step away, maybe a few feet back from your drawing. Make sure you've got everything. You're not missing anything. And we're ready to move on. Okay, so you got about 30 seconds, and we're going to start with Jack's coat, the bat right on top. Awesome, Tammy. Fantastic. Huge Jack and Sally fans. Awesome. Oh, by the way, guys, la a couple of weeks ago, we did another uh, Jack and Zero painting. Hang on a second. <sighs> oh, 
Hold on one sec, guys. Hold on one sec. While you guys are getting ready to start do, uh, doing stuff on Jack here in a, mo uh, in a moment, a couple of weeks ago, we did this one. We did this. A little simpler, a little easier, but uh, the video's still up under the live tab if you guys want to go back and check this out. Taught you guys how to draw everything, and then we painted it, okay? So if you guys are interested, for those of you that are, you know, want to do another Nightmare Before Christmas painting, we've got Jack and Zero, okay? All right, here we go. Let's talk about Jack. Let's talk about Jack. We're going to start with this big bat on his shoulders, right? So we're going to start with the bat head right up in here, right below his neck. You can draw a little line that, that goes across at an angle, right? We're drawing this at an angle, a little line that goes across like this, slightly curved. It's the top of the bat's head. Okay, once you've got that, give me some bat ears, little pointy things that go up and drop down. Okay, kind of like this. Again, guys, if you're interested in any of these past videos, simply go to the live tab of the Painting with Jesse page and you'll see every single video that I've done over the past few weeks and months, okay? Including the Jack and Zero one you guys just saw. All right, from right here, we're going to bring this down. It tapers down like in a V-shape, connects to the bottom of the bat's face. Okay, maybe, maybe this is a little curved, more curved on the other side, but not that big of a deal. Okay, then let's let's give it a couple of slits for the eyes. Okay, like that. Whoops. Let me let me get it a little closer here. This one needs to be more towards the edge. There we go. A little better all right now from here right down in here you guys see this big wing over here this one right here we're going to draw from right about the middle of the head right in here this is going to come up flies up towards the edge of your canvas or paper and it can depending how far out from the edge you are this can connect all the way over you can even lose the point, so you don't have you don't have to actually have the point if it actually goes off the edge of the canvas, right? Out edge of your paper. So there's one. Above it, you do another one. Comes up, kind of same thing. And then we got one more wing, right? We got one more of these. Right in here. You can overlap them a little bit, comes up, goes out as well. Okay, kind of like that. Work on that for a moment. So, Cynthia Sama says, you should take donations for these classes. On that note, <laughs> for those of you that are interested, I do have a virtual tip jar, okay? I'm on Venmo, I'm on PayPal, and I'm on Zelle. Okay, and you can find me on Venmo under Painting with Jesse, at Painting with Jesse. PayPal, same thing, Painting with Jesse. Painting with Jesse is all one word, especially with PayPal. That's especially important. Wherever you guys go on PayPal or Venmo, you'll see my picture holding up a canvas, a little picture, but you'll be able to see me. And then I've got Zell, 951-217-2237. If any of you are able to and can help, it's fantastic because it, you know, it makes it, uh, I can, it helps me do a lot more of these. And so, you know, if you guys are able to, it's not necessary, you know, I appreciate you guys are here with me, but yeah, you guys can help support the page by going to my virtual tip jar. This information is also in the description of the video. <clears throat> so you can, uh, don't go now, don't do anything just yet. You can always go to the description of this video and you'll see all these details there. I'll bring it up again later also, but thank you for bringing that up. Again, if you're able to, that would be amazing. 
a dollar, five dollars, ten million dollars, five thousand dollars, whatever you guys got. I take Bitcoin also. <laughs> Just kidding, I can't take Bitcoin on those. I would. Here we go. Other wing on the other side. We're going to start with this big wing right in here, the one that goes above Sally's head. So, right about right here, comes up, curves over a little bit, kind of goes right up in between the faces, curves back, connects right in there. Keep in mind, all this is going to be covered up with paint for those of you that are painting, so there's going to be some overlapping with that paint. Don't stress too much about the lines being perfect and, you know, all that other good stuff. So this next line, this next one's going to be, we're going to start it about right in here. Kind of come over, curves back behind Sally's head, and maybe peeks out behind her head there, and then it comes back, curves down, and connects right in there. Okay. And then the last one comes out like this, gets lost behind Sally's head. If you have a shoulder line, part of Jack's uh, shoulder in there, go ahead and erase that. And then right here, I'm going to erase this and fix this a little bit. All right. Look at that. And just like that, we're getting there. We are getting there. Harry Potter, that's another really popular request that I get and definitely got to do some Harry Potters. You know what? Maybe on this line right here, if you want, it could be a little higher, right? We'll be able to make adjustments. Once we take a little step back, we'll look at it and make little adjustments if we need to. All right, guys, you guys got about 30 seconds and then we're going to do his coat, the inside of his coat. We've got a line that's going to come drop down in here, connects over to, her, uh, to the side of Sally's head. And then over here, we got on the other side, we've got a line that comes down and curves down, okay? So here we go. Here we go. We are we're getting there. We are getting there. Right in here. First what I want you guys to do, we're going we're gonna to mark off where these lines are. They're just on the sides of the bat's face. Okay? Like that. The openings to his coat. This one's going to drop down, curves out towards the edge a little bit, and then comes back. Okay, something like that. And actually maybe a little, a little steeper. This should connect a little further down. It kind of narrows down a little bit more. There we go. And then over here, this guy comes out a little bit. And then I know in the original it touches the side of uh, Sally's head or her hair, but we're going to bring it down to the shoulder in this case. Jack just happens to be a little bit more angled than on the original. No big deal. Just going to bring that out a little tiny bit. There we go. And then maybe the little shoulder over here. I'm just, I'm just going to drop it a little bit. Jack's kind of narrow. He's a skinny guy, so I don't want him to be too wide. I'm just bringing down the shoulder line here a little bit in so he has a little bit more narrow, of a narrow look. Last thing we're going to do is put in the little lapels to his coat, okay? His collars. Lapels, collars, I think they're, they're called, I think they're lapels, right? Kind of do that. We're going to do that in just a moment. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Kara Cat says Beetlejuice. Angela McKelkey says, got to admit, added zero. Yeah, if you want to add zero floating around the back somewhere, or maybe he's Little heads peeking over the side or over here. Feel free to do so. Add zero. Got a lot of Nightmare Before Christmas fans I can see here today. Okay. Over on this side, this coat collar or the lapel. Actually, we're going to go on this side here. Right about right in here. We're going to draw a little line that comes out. And then it dips forward and comes down and starts hugging that line that we created for the outside of his coat or the inside of his coat. Other side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go, comes out, and then drops down. Okay. Maybe here, a little curve that gives us where the sleeve connects to the coat. And let's take a look around. Are we missing anything on Jack? 
We're not doing the pinstripes. Unless you want to add those pinstripes, you can. <clears throat> Take a look at the original and add the pinstripes. We're going to be adding those pinstripes when we add paint. What we've got left is Oogie Boogie. So let's refine the circle up on top. The moon, you know, nice little, nice, as, as perfect of a circle as you can give me. You can also use like a jar, like the cap on a jar, or something that's round about the size that you need to use as a, as a template. Or you can just do it with your pencil. <clears throat> Oogie Boogie. We're going to start with the edges of his body. Okay, so I'm just putting, putting in the lines for the, his shoulders. Okay, they come up a little bit, and then they curve in towards the head. That's what we're starting with, right there. <clears throat> Mandalorian, ooh, that would be a good one. Yoda, I haven't done a Yoda either. Got to do baby Yoda. Moana. Moana would be good. Whoa, did I just lose something? Okay, guys. Let's look at Oogie Boogie's head. So he, go, he almost looks like a, like a giant pillow. Like his head's a giant pillow, right? Kind of a... Or... or He's got, a, he's got a hat, kind of like Santa's hat. So we've got a couple little lines that come up, curve up. These are, these are part, a part of his face already. We're starting to create the face. Curves up over the top. Okay, up over the top. Actually, I'm going to raise this a little bit higher. Then we're going to bring this up a little bit too, side of his head. And then this part comes out and bam, into a little point, comes back and connects to the top there. Okay, in a moment we're going to do those eyes. Let me darken this up a little bit. I know it's a little further away from the camera and a little smaller so that you guys can see what I've got up here. Gorillas. <laughs> Stephanie says her her uh, <laughs> oogie boogie looks like this, and she puts on an old poop emoji. Actually, it's kind of similar to a poop emoji. Hi, Faith and Aiden. How's it going? How's it going, guys? Faith and Aiden Kupizuski. Kupizuski, hopefully I'm pronouncing that. Kupizowski, uh, Kupizuski, <laughs> sorry if I, if I uh, botched out a bit. Hello, hello guys, Orca from Jaws, heck yeah. All right guys, eyes on Oogie Boogie, little slits. All right guys, the comments are slowing down, so if you guys have questions, please ask them now. And Oogie Boogie looks mad, so his eyes gotta look kinda like Evil eyes, right? He's mad. Oh, he's kind of laughing. Check him out. Check him out. If you guys want me to give you guys some shout outs in the comments, like maybe you have some kiddos that are painting along, watching, you'd like for me to say hello, please put down in the comments. And if I see it, I will say hello to you guys. Somebody said it went by too quickly. Drinking and drawing is not a good combo unless you're doing it for fun. Yeah, drinking, uh, unless you're drinking really, really, you know, slowly, then you'd be okay. But if you're draw drinking a little too fast, yeah, drawing is not going to be so easy. All right, let's do the mouth. So he has all these jagged teeth across his mouth. You know, it's kind of like that, right? Almost like a jack-o'-lantern's mouth. If you were to draw a jack-o'-lantern's mouth, kind of have the teeth for Oogie Boogie. All right, Kalina, Veronica, and Sergio, how's it going? Gabe, Caden, and Orion, what's happening? Tristan and Gabe, how are you guys? Chavez family from Michigan. Denim and Eris from Houston, what's happening? Emma, 12 years old, how are you? Chloe, Melody, and Sean, what's happening? Megan and Evan. 
Olivia. How's it going? Tyler H8. Loving it. Benicio, how's it going? EJ, how are you, EJ? Seven year old EJ. Fantastic. All right, guys. Let's continue drawing here. Got to move away from the shout outs. I'll, I'll, I'll ask you guys again in a little while. You guys can, we'll do it again. Okay, so let's take a look at our drawing here. Everybody take a little step back from your piece. Look at it and make sure you're not missing anything because we're about to start our painting session. Okay, so take a look. You guys got about 30 seconds to ensure you haven't missed anything. And we're about to get going right here. I wanted to point out, I'm using acrylic paint, and these are the colors that I'm going to be using. I've got a dark blue, mostly for my background. I got the light blue, which I'm going to lighten up a little bit more for Sally's face and her neck. Right, I've got some white for Jack and the pinstripes, the stars up in the sky. I've got a little bit of yellow for the moon. Got some orange and red, and uh, orange, orange and red for Sally's hair. Got some red for the lips, for her lips. I got some black for obvious parts, right? Jack's coat, his eyes, outlining. And then I've got a little bit of green, a couple of different colors of green for um, for Jackie's, uh, sorry, for Sally's, Jackie, Sally's outfit. And that's about it. If you guys don't have any of these colors, you're okay. Got a little brown in there too. Whatever you got is what you're gonna use. We are gonna start painting the background first. The background is the largest piece <clears throat> on our painting. If you guys first, if you guys are new to painting, you guys want to make sure you guys have plenty of paper towels. They come in handy when messes happen. Okay, and these are the brushes that I'm going to be using. If you guys again, if you guys are newer to to this stuff, and you guys are interested, or maybe you're not painting today, you're just drawing, but you want to you want to paint this in the future, and you want to see what I use. I'm using acrylic paints. I've got a water cup here with basic some basic brushes. Okay. The brushes in between steps sit in the water cup so that my paints don't dry out. Whatever paints on the brush doesn't dry out on the brush because that could ruin the brush. So again, these brushes are sitting here in my water cup. Now this brush I may not use, but I've got this big two inch brush. All my brushes are synthetic bristle brushes. I got this little half inch brush or smaller half inch brush. Uh, I've got a little quarter inch brush these are all flat, they're called flat brushes. And then I got a little tiny skinny pointy one in here somewhere that I use for outlining and for small detail. Those are the basic ones. I have some duplicates in there, which is why I've got so many of them. I've got a few of the same type of brush, but those are the basic brushes that I'm going to be using. I also have this one inch flat brush that's gonna come in handy. All right, guys, if you're painting along, you're gonna start with one of these guys. And the first thing you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be outlining everything first. That's the easiest way to do this. At least I've found, so I'm gonna take this paint and I'm just gonna outline around Jack's head. Don't forget folks, if at any point you guys gotta move, take off, I mean, leave. No big deal, the video's gonna be available later. As soon as the live session's over, you can come back and do this again, okay? And I'm gonna take this dark blue and I'm gonna come around underneath Jack's head like this. I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna outline the outside of Oogie Boogie's moon. The moon with Oogie Boogie. By outlining these things, it makes it easier for me to stay outside the lines, right? I don't wanna accidentally put any of this paint on the inside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and outline Jack's coat, his neck. Outlining generally, I use a small brush. Go around this part of Jack's coat also. Then I come around and then go over the top of Sally's head. Now the paint gets a little lighter. It goes from a dark to a lighter as we drop down. So I'm gonna stop about right here. 
so I stopped about right here because this part of it, most of it is lighter. Yours doesn't have to go lighter like mine does, like mine did. Yours could all be all one color, no big deal. I got a little bit of my acrylic paint on Jack's face. I'm gonna take a little paper towel. It has a little bit of water in it now because I dipped into my water cup right in here. And I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna wipe this off. So you can remove acrylic paint by doing that, okay? All right. Oil paint will work. Oil paint is, is, will work. You guys may be using markers. Maybe you guys are using uh, watercolors, right? All that will work. All right, so just kind of take a look around. Make sure you've got all this outlined. If your painting is going to change shades on the way down, again, it's darker at the top, and it gets a little lighter towards the bottom on mine. That's a choice that I want to continue. You just, yours doesn't have to be like this. If yours is all one dark shade or whatever color you use for your background, because you could choose a different color. You don't have to use the same color that I am. Then go ahead and outline all the way around everything and bring it down to the sides of Jack's coat. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sit, switch brushes. I'm going to grab that one inch brush that I talked about earlier. This guy right in here. Okay, because I'm going to be painting a larger area now, I want to go ahead and use this bigger brush for this. This paint that I'm using is really thick. I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to dip it into my water cup. So that's bring some water over and I'm going to take some of those water droplets, mix them into my paint to make it a little easier to work with the paint, right? Just a little bit. I don't want runny paint, but I want it, I want that water to blend in with, the, with that paint and it's going to make it a lot easier to work with it. So here we go, here we go. <clears throat> Watch how I do this folks, if you're newer to painting, Watch what I'm doing. I'm holding the brush kind of back towards the end here. Nothing too, I'm not up in the front, up toward the front. It's just a nice loose flow that I'm using here. Brush strokes are short. They're in different directions. I'm just kind of going around Jack's head right now. Try to mimic me. Unless you've been painting for a little while, maybe you got your own style, no big deal. Whatever you guys want to use is absolutely fine, right? But again, if you're newer to painting, Whoops, look, I just got a little drip across the front of my canvas because I got too much water on my, my brush. No big deal. Just take my little paper towel and it's gonna wipe off some of that extra, some of that paint. I didn't squeeze out um, extra paint from my brush. I'm sorry, I had the water from the brush from earlier when I first pulled it out of the cup. You wanna squeeze out all the water out, even though I went back and dipped my brush into the cup to add wa uh, water to the paint. And that first step, when I first pull it out of the cup, it's a good idea to squeeze out all the extra water that's inside of it, inside all the bristles. Otherwise, it can come out like it did here a moment ago. And I still got more drips over there. Oh, we'll take care of those in a little bit. It's not that crucial a problem. Just going through and working my way around. Oogie boogie. You do want to work rather quickly on this step. This is our first layer of paint. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get some paint on the canvas. Make sure you get rid of all the white so you don't see any of the white coming through. The color may not be perfectly blended. You're going to see kind of different shades of this or whatever color you're using. We're gonna do a second layer later. As this layer dries, because we're gonna drop this in really quickly, we're gonna move on to paint other parts of our, of our drawing. As we're painting the other parts, this is all drying. And then we come back and do another layer over it. All right? So as soon as I'm done with this step, I'm gonna to go to the comments again in just a little bit. Don't ask your questions just yet if you got any questions because likely by the time I get over there the question is going to be gone. I'll tell you when I'm ready to start looking at, for new questions and maybe uh, you know, say hello to me and I'll say hi to you. So coming around like this. Again folks, work rather quickly through this step. No need to worry too much about being super careful. The only big thing you want to be careful with is adding any paint to areas that you don't want that color to be, right? So around 
So if I act like I did earlier, where I accidentally put some paint on Jack's face, we don't want to do that. Okay, like that. All right. I think we're good. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here for a moment. That same brush that I was using earlier to outline around Jack's head. I'm just going to come in here where the neck is because it's a smaller area. Switch into my little half inch brush and just add some paint in there. Okay, if you guys want, what you can also do, and this is optional, you can paint your edges to match. So you can come across the edge, top, and paint all in there. I'm not going to do that. I did on the original. I usually paint my edges. You look at, see that? Missing a little part in there, but my edges are all painted on the original. Just to save a little time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go through the questions. You guys continue working on this. Look at some of the questions that are coming up. All right. Holden, seven years old from Hutchinson, Hutchinson, Kansas. How's it going, Holden? Thank you for joining in today. Aiden and Travis. Awesome. How are you guys? Tim Deemer, how's it going? Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. If you just wanted to do the drawing part of it and you're, you know, you're not going to be joining us for the rest of the painting, don't worry. Max, 11 years old from Delaware. Or if you're going to be painting for, uh, later on, uh, you know, no worries. Maybe you're drawing now and then painting later. Ariana and Chelsea, how's it going? Eight years old. And Raven is five years old. How's it going? Chris from Chicago. Hey, Ben, how are you? Aria, seven years old from Minnesota. Chris in Chicago, seven years old. How are you? Thank you all for joining in. Chris in Chicago, how are you? Cruz, Wisconsin, I think it is. PJ from Detroit, age eight. How are you, PJ? Chris in Chicago, seven years old. All right, guys, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at our painting, right? Again, if you guys look at my piece, the color's a little bit, it's not uniform. For this step, that's all we really care about because we, you're not going to be able to get a really even coat of paint on this first step. Not usually. Often it depends on the type of paint that you're using, but if you're using acrylic paint, it tends to be transparent, okay? And you don't necessarily have a really nice even coverage at this step. So don't worry about that. What I want you to do now, if you're changing your shade of blue a little bit, like I am, I'm going to take my big big one inch brush that I was using. I'm going to take a different plate. I'm going to bring some of that dark blue over to this big plate. So I'm grabbing a little bit of this blue. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of white, a touch of white. I'm grabbing some white with the same brush and then I'm mixing the two colors together like this to create a lighter shade of that dark blue. And what I'm going to do then is once I've got the shade that I want, now I'm going to come in here and add this color on the second half of my painting. And again, I want to do the same thing, or the, or the lower half, or lower quarter, whatever it ends up being. I want to do my outlining first. And like I mentioned earlier, usually I use a smaller brush for my outlining. I'm taking a little bit of a chance with this bigger brush, it's easier to go uh, over my, across my lines, which I don't want to do, so I just got to be careful. So I'm outlining. You know what? Let me switch brushes. Better safe than sorry. While we can fix most of the mistakes on our painting, sometimes, you know, having to take the time to fix something isn't necessarily what we want to do. So switching back to my little half inch brush, I'm just going to come in here, paint across like this. I'm going to use this brush also in these little sections between the bat, the bat wings, and then come in here and fill this in also. Again, keeping in mind that this is not going to be a really even coat of paint. If anybody, if anybody wants to know what brand of paint I use for these, typically I use the Artist's Loft brand from Michaels. Hey guys, while you're on here, say hello to Ariel. Ariel's a friend of mine that often joins me on some of these painting sessions. And she is helping 
by being an admin. I think she's still on to the page. She actually jumped on here to help uh, see if there's any scammers that jump on so she could ban them from the page. So if you guys could say hello to Ariel, please do so. Ariel Betancourt. What state are you in, Ariel? I forgot where you moved to. Anyway, thank you for your help. Ariel's an awesome artist, by the way. All right, there we go. So come in here and add a little touch up to all this. Okay. First layer down. Arsenio Sardi, hello from Orlando. What's happening? All right, I'm going to pull the camera back just a touch. It looks like I'm missing a little bit of the... Okay, there we go. And then again, I've got a little drip over here. I'm just going to take my paper towel, dip, excuse me, dip it in some water, and then I'm just going to come in here and clean this up a bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly white in here. It's going to have other pink colors over them, so no big deal. All right. Utah, Ariel, that's right, Utah. In between their bodies, in here, Ariel, thank you. Yes, guys, let's not forget in between the bodies. So right in here. Okay, and then right in here, a little corner in this area. Between her face. Her hair and Jack's body. Now it's a little easier to see where his coat is. Thank you, Ariel. There we go. Cool. So let's take a look. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and paint the yellow around Boogie Boogie's right in the moon. So it's the same size brush. I can simply actually I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to switch over to this little quarter inch brush. I'm going to take some yellow right with the brush and I'm going here. Go around the Boogie Boogie's face. Body. Take a smaller brush. Excuse me, folks. I got a little bit of uh, <clears throat> sniffles. I'm not sure. Hopefully, I'm not getting getting a cold or anything. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the inside of his eyes and the mouth. Okay. So work on that for a moment. Okay, since we're working with yellow, Delia Celentano says, I give up. All right, guys, I know it can be a little frustrating. Okay, I get that it can be a little frustrating. Again, you want to try to have fun, relax a little bit. If you're giving up simply because you don't have enough time or whatever, I get it. But if you're getting a little frustrated, just, you know, do your best to enjoy yourself. Um, you know, especially if you're newer to this stuff, this is all part of the process. There's a lot of little details, there's a lot of, lot of uh, steps to this, but patience is a crucial part of this whole thing. Um, so anyway, uh, if you decide you want to stop because it's getting a little frustrating, I get it. I appreciate you being here, but um, you know, maybe try to, try to relax with it a little bit. And uh, if you can see yourself, if you can see through the whole thing, stay here, stick around, try to do the whole thing. You will learn. You will absolutely learn. Even if it 
you know, if you're having a rough time with it. Okay, so just something to think about. Janelle Bean Gwynn asks, can I, can I slow down just a little bit? Uh, you know what, folks? I will slow it down just a, a tad. However, again, we, we only have so much time. I don't want to keep you guys here super late. Um, do your best to try to keep up. It's just that, you know, we, if we do paint, if we go too slowly, there's a lot of details and stuff to, to do on here. If we go too slowly, we will be here for hours. Uh, so if you happen to get too far behind, don't stress about it. Do your best. If you see me move, let's say we're doing the background and you see me move to something else. Um, move with me and then in between steps, go back, work on whatever it is you need to go back to. Most of this stuff, except for the first layers of things like the background, most of this stuff, you can always go back and finish up. And then if you fall too far behind, keep in mind that the video will be available afterwards, okay? But yeah, definitely do your best. I'll try to maybe slow it down just a tad, but I can't go too much um, more slowly, okay? All right, guys, so here we go. We're gonna jump to the next step, and that is going to be we're working with the yellow. Um, and we're gonna, so we have a little bit of yellow. We have this really light yellow that's in here, kind of a cream color on her, on her dress or her top. Since we're working with a little bit of yellow, and that's the color that we're gonna be using primarily in there. I'm gonna take some yellow, bring it over to my mix plate. Oops. Let me clean my brush up a little bit. I got some blue in there. So I'm simply bringing some yellow over. We're gonna start adding some color to her top. And if, and if you wanna do this in just yellow, you can. I have a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna add a touch of brown, just a little tiny bit of brown. Bring it over and mix the two colors together. Give me kind of a creamish or light brown, if you will. I can also add a little bit of white to this if I want to lighten it up a little bit more. I think that's a good color for now. And I'm going to come in here to the top. I'm going to outline it. Line the, her, her neckline and the shoulder line. Come across and do this. I'm down in here. I'm going to come down. I can because on the original you can't see too far down past her neckline. On this new painting you can. So I'm just going to split that down the middle, and then I'm going to fill in the rest. After I'm done with this step, I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to catch up. Okay. Again, I'll go through those comments. See who's here with me and answer, asking questions or saying hello, etc. Let's see what time do we got. We're at 5:30, so we've already we're, we've been at it for about an hour and a half already. Okay, so you know, if we again if we go too slowly, we're gonna end up three and a half, four hours, which I don't mind too much. But I'm I know a bunch of you guys are gonna go. Wait a minute, Jesse, that's way too long. <laughs> so again, do your best, guys. Angelique and Monique from New Mexico, how are you? Mary Blair, I will have to do this when I get my computer working. My phone is too small for this. Yeah, you want to probably want a little bit of a larger screen, or maybe if you can project. I don't know if you've got like Chromecast or anything like that on your on your TV. Maybe you can uh, project that out to to your TV. Kennedy H8, how's it going in Hart? Hart, you look went by too quickly. It looked like maybe Missouri or Montana. I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, so this color looks like a little bit of a light brown. It could be lighter than this, it could be darker than this. Don't worry about it too much. Pick your color, put it in. This color on the, on the new painting is probably more like the color here on her shoulder, right? But I'm not too worried about it. I could lighten it up by adding some white. I could even grab a little bit of white, just a touch, mix it in with this color and then layer it over the top, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. What I am going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit of brown, same brush. Don't have to do anything with the brush, clean it up or anything. I'm just going to come in here and add it to the other half. I just want to say thank you to all you guys also for being here. I appreciate it. You guys can help my page by sharing it on your Facebook invite your friends you can also check into my page check into the page 
letting people know, hey, I painted with Jesse. We had a great time. We did Jack and Sally. You can post your pictures on your Facebook and tag my page, etc., etc. If you guys could do that for me, that would be fantastic. And then once again, for any of you that are interested in tipping the page, you can, my um, virtual tip jar information is in the description for this video. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna give you guys a little time there to do that, that part. So if you don't have brown, it is a little difficult to make brown. It just depends on the colors that you've got. A little bit of red, a little bit of black, and a little bit of yellow mixed together will help you get a color that's similar to black. Excuse me one second. Um, sorry, folks, give me one second. I'm trying to, trying to grab one of my, one of my, my little brushes that I, but anyway, if you don't have brown, it just depends on the colors that you have. Yellow, black, mix those two together, add a little bit of red, or even orange, will give you a color that is similar. So Sally is more of a really light blue. It's a lighter blue compared to the color of uh, the background. So it's going to be a really light blue, and she's coming up here pretty soon, so you'll see how I mix my, my color. But yes, Shayna, red, yellow, and blue will give you a nice little shade of brown. You could also lighten it up by adding a little bit of white. Um, but thank you. Thank you, um, Shayna. No, sorry. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy, for replying to Shayna. Okay, so here we go, guys. We're going to start mixing the color for, actually, no, we're going to do the shoulder. Got a little bit of brown up in this area in here. Comes down. There we go. Ren5 and Quinn8 from Indiana. How's it going, guys? Welcome to my page. Hope you're having some fun with Jack and Sally. Again, that was Ren, five years old, and Quinn from Quinn, eight years old from Indiana. Hello, guys. Hello. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow once again and mix it with. Maybe I'm gonna make it a little lighter. It could be a little lighter, a little darker than this original shade over here. We add a little bit of white to it to lighten it up. These colors are more suggestions, right? I know that they have their particular colors uh, for the, from the movie and things like that. But if you guys want to play around with different colors, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add, this is a little more of a cream color. like that. We'll, we'll make everything stand out and we're going to do this towards the very end. We're going to outline everything in black, okay, around the shoulders and her blouse and everything else. Everything's going to start to stand out from that, from the outlining, okay? So just be, uh, be aware that that will, that is a step that will help everything stand out. Before we start painting Sally's face, we're going to come over to her shoulder over here, and we're going to do a little bit light green in there. Right, you guys got about a minute to, to do this, these steps in here, and then we're going to move over there. Again, guys, just the main goal of all this is to have some fun. At least that's always what I suggest to everyone. Have some fun. Just relax. I know, I know it can be stressful when people want to create some really awesome pieces, and of course I hope that you all do, but uh, primarily the goal is to have some fun. So for the arm in here, I mixed a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. If you mix more brown into it, it's going to get darker, right? If you mix more yellow or white, it gets lighter. 
I actually have these colors mixed right from the original, but again, not that big of a deal. Um, this color in here was mostly just, actually it was just yellow and brown. This over here was yellow, brown, and white. If you wanted to switch those, you could do that. And you, if you've already got this color in here and you want it to be more like this color, you can always add a layer over the top of this later that's more like this shade in here. Okay, so, but again, I wouldn't worry about it too much unless you're really, really specific and you want to make sure that the, there's a difference there. Also, the, this area up in here, this little patch on your shoulder, is a little darker here than it is on here. But again, not that big of a deal. So, all right. Little quarter inch brush is what I'm using here, a little quarter inch flat brush. I'm gonna take a little bit, I got this uh, kind of fluorescent green. I'm gonna bring it over, put it on my mix plate. I'm gonna take this big brush, since I'm not using it anymore, and put it into my water cup. Okay, it goes right back into that water cup. And I got a nice creaky stool that I'm using, so that's what you're hearing in the background. Okay, a little bit of green, a little bit of dark green, just a touch. And mix the two together. Whatever green you have will work. I'm gonna come in here to the shoulder and paint that in. I don't know if you guys are listening to a little music where you guys are. Maybe you got Jack. Maybe you got Nightmare Before Christmas in the background playing. Um, but uh, in a moment here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and start up a little bit of music. It has to be copyright free music. I can't use any music with copyright protection or Facebook will ban my video. So I'm going to queue up some... Uh, music here from YouTube that's copyright free. Not the most amazing music, but it's all right. Let me give you guys a little time to catch up there. Samantha Johnson, I do have some YouTube vid videos. I do have some. Uh, a lot of the videos that I do here on Facebook, I move them over there. So if you, uh, you know, if you want to go over there and check those out, you can. But they're pretty much the same videos that I've got on here, just not as many. Heck yeah, Shayna! Halloween is my favorite time of year. Favorite, favorite. Uh, yeah, it's fall. Whoops music a little too loud. What is happening here? Are we playing or aren't we? Not sure what's happening to this feed here. Try to go to the next one here. Okay guys, so let's mix the color for Sally's face. And basically all it is is really light blue. A mixture of blue and white. My channel on YouTube is Painting with Jesse. Just like this one here. I've got two channels right now. I've got Painting with Jesse, and then I've got Kids with a Z, Zone Art of Palooza. I know that's a long one. That one has a lot of cool little videos where I teach all uh, kids, kids' drawings on there. Okay. Got some light blue right in here. Everyone's light blue is going to be a little different. Okay. And... The main thing is to have a blue, a light blue that's different than any of the blues in your background. So if you need to make it a little lighter, add a little bit of white to it. A little bit of white. Add a little bit of water to it by dipping your brush into your water cup and bringing some of that water over. By adding a little bit of water, just a little bit, you're gonna help your paint to flow. And mix enough of it so that you can cover her entire body. 
So now I'm going to come in here. We're going to start with the face. And outline everything first. Now I'm going to try to avoid covering up my pencil marks as much as I can because I want I want to still keep those for outlining later, right? When I do the when I go ahead and touch up everything, um, the scarf, the, the stitches on her face. Especially, those are all important for me to be able to see. Whoops, and it kind of went a little too high on that eye, but that's okay, we'll fix it. But I'm just going through and outlining everything. As long as you can still see where your stitch marks are. We're good. Outline the eyes. Outline the lips. Just make sure you can still see your pencil lines. Again, I just want to stress that. You don't want to lose your pencil lines completely. If you can see them through the paint, perfect. We're going to be outlining all that stuff later. And then go ahead and paint that face. to keep up if you're still stuck uh, maybe down in here jump ahead and come join us here you will get time to go back and do all the steps that we just completed the only real important part right now is that background you want to make sure your background is all done before you jump forward but if you were just finishing up your background and you haven't done anything down in here go ahead and work on the face. I can already see this blue is a little darker than my original blue, that's okay. My next layer of paint, because we are going to do another layer on top of this, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Let me lower that music a bit. Okay, and I also want to do the neck. I'd rather be, pay, be playing some scary uh, Halloween music in the background. Let me see if I, let me see if I can find some. Maybe there's some copyright free Halloween music that I can play. That'd be kind of cool. Get us get us a little more in the mood. So I'm painting our neckline, leaving a little space so I can see the my pencil marks for the stitching. This cut with this cues up here. So again, everyone, just if you see this, if you're looking at the comparison, this is a lot more of a deep blue than that is. It's a little bit darker. Don't worry about that. If that if yours looks like this too, once we add the white for the eyes and the color in the lips, etc., we're gonna come back and do another layer over this just to clean things up a little bit. At that point, you can lighten up your color by adding more white to it. Okay, so don't worry about this too much. Um, for now, just move along with me, okay? All right, let's listen to this. Let's see if this, this non-copyright music, copyright-free music is any, any good, this Halloween stuff. Let's see. All right, guys, take a moment. I'm going to look through the comments. Rebecca Vasquez Zed says, I was so sick, I missed jumping on until now. Is this being recorded, Jesse? It sure is, okay? 
lock, st uh, lock, stock, and barrel, I think is what we were uh, trying to say, Malia, I think. Good guys, take, take some deep breaths if you're stressing a little bit. Just relax a little. Okay, guys. Let's um, let us talk about Sally's hair. We got some oranges in here, some reds, and we got some little lines in there. We're not worried about those lines too much right now. What you're going to do is you're going to, you guys got about maybe 30 seconds to finish up the face. And you notice how my face, not perfectly colored in. I left some spaces for the stitches. Even in the areas where there are no stitches, it's not totally even. The next layer is going to take care of that. When I eventually come back to do another layer there, it's going to take care of that. So don't stress out about that, okay? What we are going to do next is we're going to add some colors to the hair. I'm using my, one of my half inch brushes here. <clears throat> I've got some orange in here and I got some red. I'm just gonna grab some red and I'm gonna come inside. So the darker reds are near the neck, maybe outline first and then come in and now it's important because her hair is nice and long and straight, you do want to use long brush strokes for this. Okay, you want to use, use these long brush strokes, vertical brush strokes. The bristles of the brush are going to create lines in the paint when you do this that are going to help it look like hair. So you want to do the same thing on both sides of the neck. When you do the right side of the neck, you're just going to come out a bit. And keep in mind, again, this layer of paint is going to be a little transparent. It's going to look a little more pink, even though I'm using red. The color that's more like on the original, this is going to look a little pink. Don't stress about that. Put your color in and then move on. I'm going to use the skinny part of my brush like this, narrow. And I'm going to do this right in here, right on the side of the head. And I can do the same thing on this edge. Skinny line that comes up, maybe hugs the inside of her, or the uh, outside hairline right above her face. And I can come in here and do some little streaks like this. Everyone's hair is gonna look a little different. Don't freak out a little too much. Don't freak out at all. If you know, yours isn't looking just like mine, just add some color in there and you're gonna be good. Once you do that with the red, you're gonna take some orange. I got this orange. Now I'm gonna use this orange all the way across the top. Comes over. And then it comes down over here. Remember this is the first layer of paint. We are gonna come back and do some touch-ups in here to the hair. Maybe add another layer. We're going to add some little streaky lines with dark red once this is all dry. Okay. It's more like it. And I'll take a little bit of orange with my brush. I'll just add some streaks over here on this side. guys work on that for just a little bit give you a couple minutes on that
All right. So got some, look at some of those comments. Oh, I got you. Lock the devil, shock the witch, and barrel the skeleton. I thought there was a movie Lock, Stock, and Barrel. I thought that's what you were talking about. I'm sorry. I got it. No, I didn't miss it. So um, Holly DeMarco, uh, no, I did. It's, this is this is just red. This in here is just red, and it actually looks a little bit lighter because of the white canvas. So this is the first layer. It looks a little bit on the pinkish side. So I used red and then orange. Okay, and again, this is the first layer. Now in here, I streaked a little bit of red and orange kind of together, and you want to make sure you're using long brush strokes, except for at the top. You can curve your brush stroke as you come up over the top. Curve it to follow the shape of the head. Okay. Yeah, I didn't mix anything with the red. I didn't mix anything with the yellow, except for maybe, in, or sorry, the orange, except for maybe in here where I mixed the two colors together. They almost just overlapped a little bit. But again, guys, this is the first layer of colors in here. We're going to do at least one more layer after this. Um, but as long as your painting looks somewhat like what I got in here and it looks uneven tones and colors, you're fine. You are absolutely okay. Terry Morales says that it looks like you guys only drew. Uh, that's okay. Like I mentioned earlier, you can always paint later or try to catch up if you can right now. No big deal. You can come back and paint tomorrow if you want. Okay. This is a this is a bit of a long session, so if you guys start getting a little tired, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, don't forget the video is going to be available for viewing later. So wherever you leave off today. You can always come back and do the rest maybe later tonight, tomorrow, the next day. I would prefer you guys stay with me, right? I'd love for you guys to stay with me through to the end. That would be fantastic. But I understand if some of you guys have to take off, okay? So in just a moment, we're going to start adding the black to Jack's coat. And then we're going to add the black to the eyes and the nose. Um, we're not going to do anything with the mouth just yet. We're going to add some white first, and then we're going to go in and do the mouth, but we're going to cover Actually, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. We're going to start with the white part first. White on the eyes for Sally, white on the head, and his chest, and then we're going to come in with the black. Sonic the Hedgehog. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, guys, so get a little bit of your white paint. Even though the canvas is white, and your papers are likely, the papers that you're painting on, are white you don't have to paint them you don't have to paint those in if you don't want but the paint does make a difference even though it's white on white you will see a difference in the paint so I'm gonna paint mine it's up to you to decide whether you want to paint yours or not but I'm getting my white paint ready right here Mickey and Minnie it's another good request. Mickey and, Mickey, Mickey and Minnie coming up sometime very soon. I'm actually also going to do a Jack Skellington for Christmas where he's dressed up a little bit like Santa. So for you Jack fans, got some more Jack art tutorials to look forward to. Got some white right in here. Just gonna come in here. And for this step, you can kind of just follow the curvature of Jack's head a little bit when you paint, when you draw across the back like this. Work your way around the eyes. You can outline them first. across the front, drop down, work our way around the nose. When you get down to the teeth, depending on the width of your brush, you can just kind of come in here and paint in between the pencil lines so you can still see them a little bit. When we come over with black, we're going to outline all of that. Careful with your brush choice. You may have to switch to a smaller brush than what I've got. But 
the main thing is as long as you can see your pencil lines coming through so you don't lose your teeth lines and your mouth line, right? Okay, and then I'm going to come down here and do the neck. Then I'm going to do the chest. Don't worry, folks. I know I'm, I'm, no, I'm working a little on the quick side here, but in a moment I'm going to give you guys. I'm going to give you guys time to catch up. I'll be going through those comments. All right. So I'll give you guys a little time to catch up with that. Still got almost 600 devices painting right now. That's awesome. 600 devices. I don't know how many. I know a lot of you guys are in groups, so I don't know how many people that means we got on, but still got plenty of you. We started off with about, I don't know, I thought it was like somewhere like 900 or something, which is pretty fantastic. But I know a lot of you, a lot of people were just jumping on to see, you know, kind of hear me talk at the beginning, kind of describe what was going to happen. And maybe they're coming back later. And then a lot of people were drawing, and then they decided, okay, all I'm gonna do is draw for today and I'll come back and paint later. But we still got about almost 600 of you guys on here, so that's pretty awesome. While you guys are catching up with that, don't forget, folks, I do have my virtual tip jar. For those of you that are that can and are able to and willing, if you guys wish to tip your art tender that would be fantastic I have a Venmo at painting with Jesse I have a PayPal paypal.me forward slash painting with Jesse all one word very important right here on PayPal on Venmo you can look at you can just look for me under painting with Jesse it's all one word you'll see pictures of me on both Zell is my phone number so anyway this information is at the top under the description of the video. Okay, guys, so I'm going to switch over to a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to use my little quarter inch brush for this next. Still working with the white. I've been, I was using my little quarter inch brush for the yellow part on Sally, so I want to clean up my brush a bit. And this is what I do in between, if I'm using a, a set, the same brush for a different color, I'll take the brush and I'll dip it into the cup, swirl it around a few times. I'll use a paper towel to remove any extra paint. I'll do this. Okay, just like that. Clean it up as much as I can. Then I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm going to come in here and paint the inside of Sally's eyes. Work my way around the pupil. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. Don't forget to follow the page, like the page. Got a lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun videos for you guys to do. More coming up. Got to have a lot of fun stuff for next month and Halloween. Sorry, um, for November, Thanksgiving, Christmas. A lot of cool stuff coming up. So make sure you guys like the page so you guys get the notifications on your feed, on your walls, whenever I add something new. And then also you guys can help me support, you can help, help support the page by uh, sharing the page to your Facebook, sharing it with your friends, tagging the page whenever you guys share your pictures and stuff. Okay. All right. When we were doing the red on her hair, we could have also done the lips, Sally's lips. But we won't worry about that right now. We'll come back and add the lips when we do more of the hair. Okay. What we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to start on Jack's coat. So get yourselves ready for that. I'm going to switch back up to my half inch brush because it's a larger area that I'm going to be painting. Before I do that, I'm going to look through the comments here for a little bit. You guys about a minute to get all caught up. I 
Danielle Bradley, it's 9 o'clock for me. I've been here the whole time. Awesome. Trooper. Sunset pictures. I do have some sunset pictures. I don't have any. Let's see. Sunset pictures. I was going to say I don't have any here in my studio right now. But I do have this one. Cool little beach sunset scene with the little tropical foliage in the front flowers and clouds. I got that guy. Oh, this one's not a sunset. This one's more of a moon set or a moon rising. We're going to be doing this one here pretty soon. I don't have a date for it yet, but this one's coming up probably next month sometime. Okay, so that one's coming up. Something to look forward to for those of you that are interested in that kind of a, kind of a painting. Obviously, this is more of a, that's more of a, uh, not so much children's thing, but for those of you that might like to join, that one's going to be coming up pretty soon. All right, guys, half-inch brush. I got my black paint. I'm going to take some of this black paint. I'm going to bring it over to my plate. I'm going to dip my brush into the water again to bring over a few drops of that water over. This black acrylic paint that I've got is pretty thick, so I like to thin it out a little bit with water. It makes it a lot easier to work with. Then I'm going to come in here and where my lapel is, I want to leave. I want to be able to see those lines. So I'm just going to slightly paint on the edge a little bit, leave an open space in between so I can come in here. It's just, it's just easier for me to see where I, when I do the pinstriping. So a little tiny one. Maybe not all the way through. Just little edges here and there. So I can see where the edge of the lapel is. And when I do my pinstriping, it's easier to keep track of where they're going to end. Fill in the shoulder. Get the coat all the way down to the bottom edge. do anything with the bat wings just yet. I'm going to give you guys a little time to catch up. We're going to paint the coat on the other side near the edge near Sally's face. I'm going to do the same thing. So I just leave a little tiny edge with the lapel is so that I know where my pinstriping is going to go. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's look at the comments. Laura Madonna says, my sister put my paint somewhere, but enjoying using chalk. In years, share later. Absolutely, guys. Awesome, Laura. Fantastic. Yeah, I definitely want to see what chalk looks, what your chalk painting will look like. Uh, Chalk can be really fun to work with. But yeah, please do not forget, guys, send me pictures of your masterpieces when you're all done. Send them to me on Painting with Jesse via Messenger. If you have any problems with that, simply post them under the recorded version of this live video in the comment section. Okay? That would be awesome. And eventually, I'm going to be sharing everybody's pictures. Edward Scissorhand says, Arsenio Sardi. 
That would be cool. Siren Head. It's another one. Very cool. No, um, Ashley Brady asked, did I do a second layer on um, Sally's face? Not yet. Okay, not yet. All right, guys, we're about ready here to... I'm going to go ahead and paint in the edges here on the arms. I didn't mean to leave that there. I don't want to confuse anyone. And then even up in here. Only white edges I'm leaving is right here around the lapel. I'm gonna switch brushes for a moment. I'm switching over to a slightly smaller brush. So how's everybody doing on a Friday evening? Or I think for some of you, it might be Saturday morning. How are you guys all doing? This is an awesome way to spend a Friday evening, if you ask me. Um, and then to wake up and do some art is also pretty fantastic. But I'm hoping you guys are all having a great time with me. I'm having a great time with you guys. So I got a little bit of that scary music in the background, the copyright free music from, from YouTube. That's what you're hearing in the background. Sounds like a, like a horror movie. Okay, let's talk about the bat. I'm gonna do the wings first. My edge, I don't leave any edges on this. I simply come in here and cover everything up. They can overlap. When we do the pinstriping, the little stripes on the actual wings in a moment or a little while from now, that's gonna separate everything. That's going to separate your wings from each other. So for now, all we're going to create, do is create these dark shapes for the wings. We just cover everything up. Careful with your black. Stay within your lines, right? If you, if you go out outside, outside your lines just a little bit, it's no big deal. But if you go out a lot, that's hard to fix. Not impossible, can be fixed, but can be a little tough. Come over to the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. guys go back to look for the replay of this and you happen to go into the comments and you see some link on there saying hey the live video is here don't forget don't click on those the live video is going to be under the live feed tab for my page uh, sorry the recorded version of the video of the live video will be under the live tab when you're painting with Jesse those links are scammers trying to steal your information or your credit card. Stay away from those. Keep repeating that because I just don't want anybody getting their money stolen. All right. I'm gonna switch over to my little liner brush. I got these little skinny brushes. These are called liner brushes. It's what I do my detail work with. I'm going to use this. Again, a little bit of water in my paint to work my way around the bat. I do my outlines first. It's easier to stay within the lines when I start to paint the rest of it. And then I do around my eyes. And I can go ahead and fill the rest in. Got 
and you can work quickly even if you're new at this folks I know uh, feels like you have to be really careful the only real thing you want to be careful of is that you don't once you've got your drawing in place is that you don't go over your lines right with your paint that you don't paint outside your lines what I'm using here when I whenever whoops and this eye got a little small on me that's okay I'm gonna fix the other eye make it a little smaller to match got to improvise there we go whenever I'm doing little intricate things on my paintings I'll come in I'll use my put my hand close to the canvas and I'll use my pinky I'll stabilize my hand with my pinky one of my painting events a few weeks ago somebody called it a pinky hand stabilizer and that's what this pinky does I put it up on the canvas and now I'm able to more easily control my brush strokes all right, I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes on that, then we're gonna start on Jack's face with the black. Maybe doing a little bit of outlining on Sally also, we'll see. Hi, Diana from Eatonville. How's it going, Diana Tremaine? I know you've painted with me before, so welcome back. Thank you, thank you for being here. Autumn Shaw says, totally thought this was going down Saturday. Again, the video will be available afterwards, so you can come back and watch it. Tina Harris says, my daughter Katie is adding zero. Awesome, Katie. Add zero to your painting. Zero and Spiral Hill. Cool. Fantastic. Thank you guys. So many cool comments coming from you guys. So awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here. Everything that we've got so far is all first layer. We are going to come back and do at least one more layer over most of the stuff on here. Okay, don't sit there stressing about making everything perfectly even and oh my gosh, I got to cover every single part of this. That's what slows you down. Put the layer down and move along, okay? We'll come back and do another layer on most everything, and that's what's gonna make your painting really stand out. So here's what we're gonna do. Small brush, quarter inch, eighth of an inch brush, something small. I got one of these little guys, a little eighth of an inch brush. I'm still working with the black, okay? Working with some black here. Hey, Wonder, Wonder Pointer, I saw your comment earlier, the Wusa. Just remembered that I saw Wusa on here. Just want to say hi to you if you're still on here, painting along. I know you're a big Jack or Nightmare Before Christmas fan, so Wusa to you. Anyway, guys, just coming in here, and I am outlining the eye a little bit. I'm using my pinky hand stabilizer. Gonna come in here and paint in the rest, right? Put my outline in, then I come in and paint the rest of that eye in. switch brushes. I'm going to get my little liner brush for that. And when I do the mouth, brush selection, very important. Kind of a no-brainer, but just in case, the smaller the area, the smaller the brush you want to use. All right. So take a little time to get those in.
last week. For those of you that might be interested, we did Miguel from Coco. I teach you guys how to draw this completely freehand, just like today. We draw and then we paint Miguel and his magic guitar. Okay. Uh, the week before that, we did we did his dog Dante. Same thing. Teach you how to draw and how to paint. If you guys are interested, you guys can go back and look at that under the live video. Okay. And then for those of you that might be interested in the Day of the Dead, Sugar Skull stuff. Some of you might be familiar with this. For those of you that are, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me sure I don't drop that. For those of you that are familiar with the Mexican Loteria game, uh, basically it's a, a version of, similar to bingo, but you use, uh, you use things like uh, objects. Uh, there's one called La Calavera, which is basically the skull. Um, there's all kinds of different images. You use all these images to play the game. Instead of calling out letters and numbers, you're calling out names of the, of the objects or the images that are on the card. Well, we did this little playing card with the sugar skull in it, and that video is still up. We did this one, I think it was last Thursday, but I teach you guys how to uh, make the card, make it look like a playing card by bordering off the edges, and then I teach you how to paint the inside. There's a template. Anyway, those are some of the, some of the recent ones that we've done. Okay, guys, here we go. Liner brush, little tiny skinny one. And again, you can find those videos under the live tab of Painting with Jesse. Little liner brush, skinny thing. Use a little bit of paint. I mean, grab a little paint with a brush. And I'm just gonna be using the very point of my bristles. This is mostly gonna be kind of a drawing. Whoops, not enough paint. Let's get a little bit more there. Something like that. Okay, there's Jack's nose. Now one thing that I'll do when I use my liner brush whenever I grab paint, if I want to make a really skinny line, when I dip my brush into the paint, I'll spin it and pull away. I'll spin the brush and I'll pull away, and that gives me a really, makes the point really skinny and easier to make, makes it easier to make small lines with. And that's the method that I'm going to use when I outline the mouth. Okay, so plenty of water in my paint. Now I'm going to take my brush here. I'm going to have to load it up a couple times. I'm just going to go all the way through. And one thing that I like to tell people is once you commit to your line, go for it. Don't, go, don't move so slowly that your hand shakes. I'm using my pinky again this time. I'm putting knuckle down. To stabilize my hand. And if you guys notice as I got to the end of my line, it started the paint started to disappear because I'm using it up. I just come over, reload my brush, spin it, again, use a little spin method. I'll come back, I'll move back a ways, start all over, and then paint on through. Just like that. Can't forget the stitches. Let's add some stitches. Still adding water to my paint. And I'll come in here. Go. 
Alicia Smith, no worries. Come on back whenever you're ready to, to finish the painting, okay? You got it, Karen Ann. No worries. Again, folks, if you got to run, just come on back. Come on back and um, continue where you left off. Yanni Lee, you're very welcome. Braylon, 12 year old from Westchester, Ohio. Ohio. You are very welcome, my friend. You are very, very welcome. Uh, Susie Lozano, yes. She, Susie asked, can you use watercolor and acrylic on the same painting? Starting with water paint, but I don't, but I don't have white or black. You can, uh, you can. It just depends. You know, you you won't, you can't really make any mistakes on that oil. If you were mixing oil paint and acrylic paint, there you can run into some problems. You, if you were doing acrylic and oil paint, you would want to use the acrylic as your base, and then oil paint would go over it. Uh, with watercolor and acrylic paint, they're both water-soluble paints, so it doesn't really matter how you use them, but yes, you can combine them. All right, everyone, here we go. We are done with everything on first layer. What we're going to do next is we're going to add uh, another layer of paint over Sally's face. This is where I'm going to lighten up my blue a bit by adding more white to it. That's going to make her face quite a bit lighter, which is what I want. I want it to look a little more like that. And everybody's shade of face color is going to be different, just like the moon can be a different shade of yellow. You don't have to stress about, um, you know, the color that you, you've got. If your color looks like my color on your face right now and you're happy with it, then perfect. But if you want to lighten it up a little bit, this is what I'm going to do. Whoops, got some white, but I mixed a little bit of orange in there. I don't want to do that. I got some white over here. Just going to grab a little bit of blue. A touch of blue for now. Don't need much blue. And then I mix the two together. Now I'm going to lighten this up quite a bit. And then I'm slowly going to introduce a little bit of blue at a time until I get to the shade that I want. The darker the color, the more it overpowers, the more quickly can over overpower the lighter color. So. What you want to do is add any time you're mixing purple with white, red with yellow, the lighter color usually, um, it's going to take a lot more of the lighter color than it is of the darker color. So here we go, we're almost there. Just mixing my two colors together. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this mixture. and it clicked off of the feed. I must tell how to do that. There we go. All right, here we go. On the face. Now, here we go. Much lighter. Again, try to, try to keep your pencil lines showing. If they disappear a little bit, that's okay as long as you can kind of see them and are going to be able to outline them in black later, that's all you really need.
Okay. Now I'm going to do that neck. So you guys notice, this makes a big difference in lightening it up. And you could, do, you could do the opposite thing if you wanted to darken it up, right? You would just add a lot more blue to your color. And then by layering it over the top of the original color, it changes the shade quite a bit. So, all right. We're gonna start picking things up a little bit, folks. So we'll get ready to kick it up a gear. So work through this as quickly as you can if you're doing what I'm doing. Down to the neckline, here we go. All right. All right. Corpse Bride says Beckwood Smith. Gloria, how's it going? Um, maybe, maybe we should do a Corpse Bride one next week. Huh? That might be pretty cool. So I'm using, the blue that I'm using for the base that I mixed my, uh, my color with is just a basic blue. There's no, it's got no fancy name. It's this artist loft blue, okay? And I just mixed it with some basic white. There's no fancy name on these artist, artist loft brand colors, but um, any basic blue should work, okay? Basic blue and white. Okay, we're gonna do some more work on the hair here in a moment. So finish up on here. You guys got about a minute to finish up the face. We're gonna work on the hair. We're gonna move to her outfit. And we're gonna touch up the background. So again, we're gonna have to pick things up a little bit. So get your red and your orange ready here, folks. Back to my same little half inch brush. I'm going to go ahead and start with the red. Remember the brush stroke is long, vertical. You can turn your brush sideways. up those edges a little bit by bringing the color closer to your um, to your lines like on the neck on the body or face that kind of thing and you can bring some of these little red streaks out a little bit into the orange from earlier just a little bit over the top of the head. You got a nice little red edge to everything, so you want to bring that over to the other side of touch. All right.
two hours and 30 minutes, wow. So we gotta, we gotta pick it up a little guys. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna keep you guys too late, but we got at least another 45 minutes of painting time to go, at least, okay? So just paint for as long as you can. I know some of you guys are troopers and will paint for like, forever. You guys will paint for a long time. But if, but don't stress, if you gotta move, if you gotta, you know, again, you gotta leave, stop wherever you are. Just come on back and continue the video tomorrow or the next day, etc. Okay, but don't worry about it too much. I know, I know all of you would love to stick around to the end. I know not, that not everybody can. So we got about another 45 minutes to go. Okay, and that's with us picking up the pace. So, so let's uh, let's pick it up a little bit. All of this that we're doing right now, you can refine on your own later. Okay, so just work with me, stay with me, and then. You can always continue working on this later, tomorrow, etc. So, same brush, let's grab a little bit of orange. I don't have to change, I don't have to clean the brush up or anything like that. We're just going to come in here, we're going to layer our orange a little bit. It mixes in a little bit with the red that's already on the brush, which works, works in my favor, works in our favor because there is a combination of the two colors throughout the hair. And come in here with where it's a little streaky, and add a little bit of orange to give give it a few streaks. Some of you that are working a little slower, again, don't stress out, guys. Don't. I don't want you guys getting upset or going, "Oh my gosh, he's going too fast now." Just take your time with it. Try to keep up, as I'm saying, I know I'm kind of contradicting myself a bit. Try to keep up. If you start to fall behind, just know that you have more time. You'll, be able, you'll continue to be able to do this on your own time, okay? Caitlin, 11 years old from Boston, Massachusetts. How are you? Hey, Ariel, that's a cool Corpse Bride picture. You got it, Julie. Julie Ogden, absolutely my pleasure. Okay, guys, work on the hair for about another minute. We gotta move on. Again, don't stress if you have to move on with me. You can always come back later and do more touch-ups. When we do the outlining, and that's really important, everything's going to pop. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we move on to another step, I want to grab a smaller brush, and we're going to do the, the lips, her lips in red. Unless you want to change up the color, right? Maybe you want to change the color of her lips to purple or who knows, orange. But I'm using my little skinny or my little uh, quarter-inch brush here. And I only show you the brushes so you guys have an idea. If you've got a, a slightly bigger brush or a larger brush than what I've got, don't worry about it, right? They work They work just as well. I'm just showing you what my toolkit looks like. If you got anything similar to these, you're good to go. All right. And there's the lips. Let's look around a little bit. See if, see if there's anything else that I could do in this red. Going through and touching things up a little bit on the edges of her hair. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to do a little bit of brown. We're going to work in some brown right now. We're going to do both this brown here and then the patch. So this patch is a little bit light, a little bit darker brown on my painting, so I'm going to take straight brown. Same brush. I cleaned it up a little bit, and I'm just going to come in here and Cover this up a little. Give me a bit of a more uniform color. Then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and mix the brown and the yellow together to lighten it up a touch. Whole bunch of you guys are troopers on here. Hanging tough, right in here. Just 
adding another layer of that of that lighter brown or slightly lighter brown in here. take this creamier color that I mixed from earlier the one that I did on the sleeve and I'm gonna make a little bit of more a little bit more of that a little bit of yellow a little bit of white and then a little tiny touch of brown now I'm gonna take this color and I'm going to come in here and then just layer over the top of this kind of yellowish color that I had on here earlier. <laughs> Rakan Boss is still here and gives me one of those little bicep. Alicia Renee, no worries. Aubrey, six year old from Ohio, slowing down because it's getting late. I get it. No worries, Alicia. And Aubrey, six years old, hello to you guys. Okay, Shayna, sounds fantastic. For those of you that are leaving, don't forget, send me pictures. I'm sorry that it's taking so long, but uh, you know, it does take, it takes a little time to develop a nice painting. So a lot of little details on this one. I'm sure you guys all understand. The nice thing is, <coughs> excuse me, you can come back and uh, do this later, finish off later. So now I got a little bit of yellow and I just coughed a little bit open but I'm not I mean I don't feel sick but sniffles and a little bit of a cough all right here we go right in here a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown just gonna come in here on the sleeve and layering over the top of this little cream color that we did at the beginning doesn't have to be a really clean paint it could be a little bit uneven in tone and you might be able to see some yellow or some brown peeking through. That still works for her outfit. All right. Okay. I'm happy with this green over here. I don't need to layer it again. When I do my outlining, it will pop just fine. So I'm gonna leave it at that. In a moment, we're gonna come in here and do a little shading on her, around her eyes. We're gonna use the same color, maybe darken it up a bit and paint in Oogie Boogie. We're gonna do another layer of black over Jack. And we're going to layer our background. Actually, we're going to layer our background before we do Jack. We're going to layer our background and then do the pinstripes on Jack after we do the black. And we're pretty much, we're pretty much there. 
So, for those of you that are ready, mix a little bit of black and white to create a gray. I'm using my little quarter inch brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. Create a nice gray. Just gonna come in here with this. Make sure you're using a small brush for this part. Right over the eye like this. Come over to the other eye and do the same thing. There's also a little shade, a little shadow underneath. Not as thick. Same thing on the other eye. Okay. There we go. Okay, take your, take your time on that. Daniel Mus Musaccio, thank you, had a great time. You are very welcome. Hello from Philadelphia. Debbie and Sarah having a great time. First time here. Fantastic, Debbie. Welcome to you ladies. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, so I do do flower paintings. I've got a couple here. So I got these guys. So I got this one. We have the tutorials up on this one. Okay, basic kind of a little, the little impressionistic rose style. And then I got... This one I don't have the tutorial up for yet. That's probably coming sometime early next year, I think. Or who knows, maybe in December. But I've got a few more than a few more of these. Work on your eyeshadow, folks. Then if you're ready to go, let's color it. Oogie boogie. Same shade. You can, you can simply mix some more if you've run out. Use a small brush. We do that second layer of blue in a bit. I'm gonna, I'm going to go and refine, further define the edge of the moon. So around right here, you see this little white layer. That's gonna be blue. This little white edge in there on my painting. Maybe you don't have this on yours. Now let's switch over to a smaller brush. Switching over to my little liner brush once again. Coming here. I can see my, my little moon over here isn't quite as round as that one or as large, but I'm going to define the edges when I do the blue. I'm going to define the edges a little bit and that's going to make it look rounder. Okay guys, I'm going to do another layer of my blue in the background. 
So let me get that prepped. Whatever color you're using, if you're using this same blue as I am, remember there's a, well, in my there is there's that transition between the dark blue color at the top and it gets a little lighter as we go down. For this part, I am going to go ahead and add some water to my paint. For the same reason that I add water, added water to the paint in the other steps. And I don't, I think I did it, I did it at the beginning also, right? I did do this to the original layer of blue paint. So I add some water to it. And here we go. Nice flow to this paint because I added the water to it. switch brushes. I'm going to use my smaller brush to outline and fill in some of the little spaces in between the gaps. Switching brushes here to one of my little quarter inch, I mean my half inch brush. I'm going to go through an outline. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use this step to refine the shape of the moon a little bit. We can do that. down in here between the, the wings of the bat and Sally's head. Painting requires patience, right? And lots of steps, depending on the painting that you're creating. So, I appreciate all of you guys that are still hanging out. You guys are troopers. So I'm just taking, again, I'm just kind of using the smaller brush to outline the areas towards the top that are in this darker blue. set also and do the same thing. On this 
with this step, the second layer of this background, my background starts to get more of a solid, even tone throughout. Whereas at first it was really blotchy. And you could go through here and do a third layer if you want. We're not gonna do that together because that's gonna really just make things a lot longer, right? But if you have time and you want to on your own, after the second layer is dry, if you're doing a second layer, you can always go back and add another layer over that, over it and then further evens things out. Let me look at my moon here, see what I need to do here. A little adjustment, all right. Okay, I'm going to lighten up my blue a little bit by adding some white to it. I'm also adding more water to the mix. Okay. And down in here. Maybe overlap these colors a little bit in here for that transition from dark to light. Notice how I'm holding my brush. Nothing too back here near the, near the uh, back of the handle. Still using loose brush strokes. Just gonna come in here, bring this up a tad. As I come up, there's very little brush uh, paint left on my brush, so when I overlap this paint over the darker paint above it, it helps to blend a little bit. All right. So work on your backgrounds for a little bit, not too long. And don't worry if you see me move on, move with me. You're gonna have time on your own to go back and do any touch-ups to your background that you would like to do, okay? So again, just move with me if you're still working on your background. When I move to the next step, move with me. So take about a minute or so, we're going to come in and do another layer of paint over Jack, Jack's coat, then we're going to move in and start outlining all the little edges on Sally. By the time we're done with that, the jacket's done drying and then we're going to add the pinstripes, maybe a little shading up in here on Jack's back of his head, and then we're, we're good. Look at you guys, still here. Good night, Danielle. Sarah Brooks, you got it. Ziamara Galano, you're very welcome. <laughs> Delia, Delia says, I should say my Sally looks like she's been crying. <laughs> There is, guys. There is a lot. There are a lot of steps to this, and uh, you know, I, oftentimes it depends on the pace that we have. So earlier, I think at the very beginning, somebody was asking about, you know, hey, could you pick up the pace a little bit, and or sorry, slow the pace down a bit. But you guys see, right? We're already quite a bit into this. 
and even at the pace that I went. And I know a lot of people got left behind with this pace, but that's okay. It's all part of it, all part of the process. So, all right, guys, here's what we're doing next. One more layer on Jack's coat just to deepen the block, and then we're going to outline Sally's face, adding details to the stitches and stuff, and that won't take very long. The very last thing we're going to do is add the pinstriping to Jack's coat and the shading up in here on the back of his head and over his eyebrows, and we're pretty much good to go. Okay, so what I want everyone to do is grab your half inch brush or close to this size brush, whatever you've got that's close to it. It also depends on the kind of size canvas you're using. I'm gonna take a little bit of black and add it to my plate over here so that we can do this next step. Alright, my brush, dipping it into the water. Here we go. Make sure you're adding a little bit of water to your paint. It has, it does half the work. Working on my bat wings first. This, this second layer over the black makes everything even, just like with everything else that we're doing. When we do the second layer, it makes everything more even. The tone also gets a little richer. Switching to a smaller brush to do the bat. All right. So take a couple minutes on that coat. We're going to come in and do some outlining in black, like I said, around Sally's face here in just a little bit. Laura Swartzel, you're welcome. BJ Carey, fantastic. Sounds good, Rachel. Again, guys, if you guys have to take off, absolutely, I understand. Say hello, please, if, as you leave. Um, or sorry, goodbye. <laughs> Maybe hello, too. And then uh, we're ready to move on to the outlining. I'm going to take a little liner brush, some black. Now this is where everything begins to pop. We're going to outline Sally's eyes. Give her 
your people. Outline the little eye shadow line a little bit. The outside of her eye, her uh, the dark part of the outside of the eyes. And then the other people also can't forget that. some eyelashes. A few little eyelashes underneath your eyes also. So outline the eye, outline the area for the eyeshadow, darken in the pupils. Oops. Can't forget her scar. stitches around the mouth. Okay, we're going out for just a little bit. Don't forget guys, send me pictures of your stuff when you guys end up finishing. Has got about a minute here. We're going to outline her face and her chin, <clears throat> then the neck, the scarring on the face, outlining the clothing. <clears throat> and then we're prop, we're like 95, 96% done by that time when we're all done with that. Can't forget the little stars. Oh, we also have little stars to add. Those are easy. We're going to outline Jack's head a little bit too in his neck. Thunderstorm in western New York, huh, Donna? You got it, Danielle Grace. You got it. All right, guys. Outlining the face. So I've done paintings, we're going to come around like this, around the chin, the whole face gets a little bit of an outline. I've done paintings where in two steps or two sessions, a couple times now. 
And uh, what I notice is the first session always gets a whole bunch of people in it, and then the second session doesn't get as much, as many. And I, I thought about the possibility of doing this one in two steps, but don't know what you guys think. Future for future reference. I mean, technically, you could do this in three sessions if you wanted, right? You can always come back to the video at a later time and start where you left off. You can do it in five sessions. All that, all that, right? So, um, oh, so here, guys, real quick on this line here from the face. I'm going to bring it down into the hair. So the line, your hairline right here, the, the edge of the face that comes on like this, we're going to bring it down into the hair. Tony Signs, I, I don't have Apple Pay. Thank you, though. I don't have Apple Pay. The only thing I've got is the is PayPal, Zelle, and uh, what's and uh, well, I was about to say WhatsApp and um, Venmo. Okay, so but thank you. Okay, the neck. Let's go with the neck. back down so this outline you can bring it all the way down the shoulder Monica Faubert you are absolutely welcome Thank you for joining today. Then we're going to bring this outline to, on the other side of the neck over, carries over into the shoulder, comes across now right in here. This is going to define the edge where your hair meets the top of the shoulder. So Sally, by now, if you guys are following along with this outline part, Sally's starting to stand out from the picture, from the image, from the background and everything else. Now right in here, we're going to bring the shoulder line all the way down. We're having a marathon painting session today. This is, I think I do believe this is going to go down in the books as the longest session that I've had so far, but all good. Oftentimes when I paint on my own, or when I do portraits and things like that, I'll paint for four or five hours, and time just flies by. Okay, so I went ahead and did the inside of the shoulder there on this side. Here, I'm going to come over to the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. And then don't forget, folks, for those of you that are interested in tipping, the information for my virtual tip jar is at the top under the description of the video. And so I also include it in any other... All my other videos have the information at the top, so in case you guys are interested. So now I'm doing the top of her neckline. Okay. My first love with art was drawing. I've been drawing since I was a kid. And um, then about 15 years ago, I started picking up oil painting and I started doing portraits and things like that. And I really love that. And then acrylic painting I picked up about, about five years ago, maybe. But I've got to say, 
the oil painting is pretty fantastic. Acrylic painting is awesome too. But if you've ever tried uh, oil painting, that's a lot of fun also. Different challenges. All right, the stitch around her neck. Can't forget the stitches themselves. All right. And then lastly, the scar on her neck. Well, they're technically they're not scars, right? They're just where she gets patched up. There we go. Jessica Powell, you're very welcome. Okay, Leticia Segura, sounds good. Love to see your pictures. Peggy Brown says, I'm 73 and live in Kansas. I love this site, wanted to learn for years. Thank you for making an oldie so happy. My very, my complete pleasure, Peggy. Absolutely, thank you for being here. Kima Russell says, perfect Friday night. Diana, yes, tomorrow's event is early, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 11 a.m. Pacific. So if you're on the East Coast, you guys are three hours ahead. And Central time, it's two hours ahead, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, guys, so... Before we do the pinstriping on Jack's coat, what I am going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my gray. And if you have some of the gray for that you made for Oogie Boogie or for the shading around your eyes, we're going to use the same color. Okay, or if, and if you don't have any, just make some more. Take a little bit of black. This is mostly watered down black. Um, just add a little bit of white to it to make my gray. So again, I just created a little bit of extra gray. And I'm going to come in here under her nose. A little bit of a shadow down in here. I can use my finger to, to just kind of blend it into the background a little. We're going to use that same color to come over behind Jack's head, the shadow side of his head. I'm just going to add some of this gray back in here. Anyway, folks, lots of videos on my page. For those of you who would like to go back and learn other paintings, there's a lot of cool stuff on here. And a lot more to come, so. And if your shading on the back of his head is a little on the darker side like mine is and you want to lighten it up, just add a little bit more white to your mixture. We're getting there, folks. We are getting there. And then over the top of his eyes, too, kind of a little shady area makes it, looks like he's got eyebrows. Something like that. While you guys are working on that, I'm just going to clean up some of the edges on Sally's face. I see some a little bit of white coming, kind of peeking through, like around her lips. Just gonna come in here with a little bit of the light blue that I created for her face. I'm just gonna just gonna do some little touch-ups. Again, this is all stuff you can do on your own, the little touch-ups part. I'm just doing it right now in between steps while you guys work on that. Unless I'm forgetting anything, and I tend to do that. 
the only thing we have left after this is uh, the pinstripes for Jack. And we are, we are done. In a moment, I'm going to show you guys the painting we have for tomorrow afternoon, or sorry, early, 11 o'clock in the morning over here. 11 in the morning, West Coast time. I think I have it in here somewhere, unless I left it at home. I don't think so. I think I have it in here. For those of you that might be interested, and if you can't join, the video will be available, just like this one, for you to come back and do it later. Okay, while you guys are finishing up on that, let me let me see where I've got that painting. Here it is. Check this out. <clears throat> the old barn. This painting we're doing tomorrow, 11, 11 a.m. Okay, you can, uh, if you can't join in on the live session, you can come in and watch it later. The old barn though, a lot of stuff going on in here. Should not take as long as Jack and Sally just because of all the detail, but you can see there is plenty of detail on this one too. Okay, for those of you that are into old barns, this one's gonna be a fun one. guys let's do some pinstripes do some pinstripes you're gonna need just basic white for this a little tiny brush a little lighter brush so get that ready Okay, so for this one, instead of my little liner brush, I've got this little, and you can use a liner brush for this one, okay, a little skinny pointy one. I got this little eighth of an inch brush that I can press up against my plate once I've got some white paint on it. Press it down against the plate and it squeezes the, the edge into a really tiny point. Now I'm gonna do, what I'm, what I'm first gonna do is do the little pinstripes on my bat, bat wings. Okay, there's one. That's one wing, and it, I don't really follow any particular edge. Just somewhere inside each wing, I'll do at least one of these. So I have this long wing that goes up and over like this. So I'm just gonna come over here and just follow that up. Goes behind Sally's head and comes on up all the way to the end. And I'll do that again. I gotta load up more paint on my brush. So I press my brush down onto the canvas holding it back here nice and loose near the back of the handle right here by, my, by the bat's head come over and this one can have two of them just for a little bit of variation okay so on this wing right here actually i'll give you guys a moment to maybe catch up on that. Let me look at some comments, see what you guys are doing. <laughs> Carmen Sensky says, my Sally looks like she had a failed plastic surgery on her lips and eyes. You know, it's funny because she almost, right, there's a little bit of that in her face, like like maybe because she's a doll, but you know, she's kind of stitched together. She does have a little bit of that look. A little bit of that look. Like, like she's got some plastic surgery going on. A little bit. OK, 
Catherine Evans Shainer, you got it. Have an awesome weekend. Trisha Plimpton. Glad to hear it. All right, let's continue with those pinstripes. Got to put some of you guys to bed. Okay, right in here on this side for this wing right here, this part of the wing. I'm going to start from the side of the head, comes over. This one I'm going to try to follow kind of the top edge a little bit, just like that. So when I do this wing right in here, this pinstripe, this stripe is going to start right on the top, right up in here somewhere. It's not going to connect all the way to the head. It's going to start like right in here. It's a little on the thick side, but that's okay. Kind of fell into the canvas a little bit as I was doing that. I can always come back with some black and clean it up, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Then down in here, I'm going to start on this end. I'm going to start, sorry, from, on this wing, I'm going to start from this end. No real reason, just because I can. Okay, and then that one takes two of them. Remember when you start a line, commit to it, and just go. And I suppose if I wanted to, I could come in here and add another one to any of these other wings. When you're all done, you can look at your piece and see if you need to add more of them. While I'm at it, I'm just gonna come in here and make my bat eyes a little bit bigger. So now I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna add some pinstripes to the to the arm. But first, I'm gonna add a little, little curved line right in there. Now from there, I'm just going to work my way down. Whoops, I'm going to, I need to come down a little closer to the painting, otherwise I'm going to be too far over the edge. Okay, here we go. And I can do these all at once. Okay. Now remember what we did with the lapels, we left a little bit of an edge so you can kind of see where the outline was. Using those edges, I'm just going to come in here and do a bunch of straight lines all the way down. I can start down here at the bottom if I want. steps you can do right on your own just watch me doing them if you're falling behind no big deal just watch me doing them you'll get the idea okay now the ones these the ones that are left are going to be a little bit trickier just a little bit because these are vertical these are well these are kind of at an angle right but the idea is they follow the path the let the the angle of the lapel and the ones that go from top to bottom um, are vertical to his coat. These are have, have a little bit of a curvature here on top, kind of follow the lines of his body just a little bit. So right in here, little curves, curve them out a little bit. And then you can kind of curve it down towards the back a touch. Now we can start to do that. Maybe this one should have come forward, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that one up a little. I'm just going to take a paper towel, dip it into my water just a touch. Clean up because the paint is still wet, the white paint, I can remove it. No problem. Now I'm going to take this line and move it down. Okay, we should probably do one more in there. Actually, I'll do it over here. There we go. We need a couple over here. And 
there we go. Look at that. So work on that for a moment. I'm going to be looking at the comments. Ask your questions. We're just about done here. All right. We still got 317 people or at least our devices on here. That is awesome. Carmen's kids. Hi, Carmen's kids. <laughs> oh, guys, you're right. Great question, Carmen's kids. I did not outline Jack. Oh, thank you for that. So let's outline Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Nice and easy, folks. So what we're going to do is we're going to outline Jack's neck and then his chin. Thank you for that once again. A little bit of water on my paint. I'm going to start down in here. And then I can also continue it over to the edge, especially the front of his face. Okay, like that. It, def it just defines him a little bit against the, uh, the dark blue background. Oops, need a little bit more water. Spun my brush there to make the point a little bit thinner. Right, it makes my tip nice and skinny. And I'm barely putting any pressure on the canvas. That really light pressure is what allows the line to stay nice and skinny. Press down a little too hard, that line gets thicker. All right. And then let's do the neck. Let's take a little step back, make sure we have everything. So guys, check this out. So even though that's pretty much the last step, we could outline her head also on this side. Actually, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna outline Sally's head. Not quite the last step, as I was saying, but once you're done with your last step, you wanna take a look at your piece, take a little step back, look at everything and make sure that you're not missing anything. You can, refine things, you can add more color, little areas that maybe, oh, and then the stars, we got the stars to do. Just adding a little outline to her head. And the stars are pretty easy, right? We're just going to use the tip of the brush, or you're going to use the back of the handle of your brush, some light paint, and we just start dotting the sky. All right. Looking good, if I do say so myself. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so now I take a little bit of white. See, like this little area in here where I, added, I accidentally added some black? I can clean that up, take a paper towel, a little bit of white water, a little bit of white, <laughs> white water, a little bit of water, and rub that over the top, and that will remove the color there. I may have to let that dry a little bit and come back and add some more red over it. There's ways to refine the painting. Okay, what I'm going to do now is clean up my brush a little. Remove all of that black paint. Just um, 
sloshing it around in my water cup. And then I just come over and I dip it into the white, just straight white paint. Since I'm, I want really small little stars, I'm going to use my pinky hand stabilizer. And I just go around and do this. Different pressure for each star. If I want bigger stars, I just push down a little bit more. If I want smaller, tinier stars, I just barely touch the chems. And you can add as many as you want. All throughout. And wherever you want. all throughout the sky. Once again, folks, don't forget to share my page. Not all my videos are this long, I promise. <laughs> this, I think, is going to be the longest one I've done. But share my page if you could. Make sure you guys like the page so that you guys get the notifications for the future events. Go back and take a look at all the videos that I've done in the past. And then if you'd like to send a, a tip to my virtual tip jar, once again, here's my info. You can find this at the top of the description of the video. Venmo, PayPal is out. Okay? I have all three of those. For those of you that can and are you know, if you'd like to help support the page, help me continue doing these, that would be fantastic and amazing. But the last, the very, the very last thing that I would do, if, let's say that I was doing my sides, my edges, like I typically do, I do my very, my bottom edge last, but that's the very last thing that I would do. I would sign the piece, and I didn't sign the original, but I'll sign it later. Anytime an artist signs his piece, Usually you sign it in one of the corners, bottom left, bottom right, pretty much wherever you want. It's up to you, it's your painting, right? But most of the times you'll see these paintings where they get, they get signed towards the bottom. And you can pick any color you'd like. I'm going to take some yellow, why not? Take a little bit of yellow, and you can sign your first name, you can sign your last name, you can sign your initials, your... Um, artistic name, your nickname, whatever you want. Whoops, I was wondering what happened to my music. I keep stopping it with my finger by accident. And I'm just gonna come over here and sign my last name. Ta-da. So Anna, yeah. Uh, so PayPal, just make sure you use uh, Painting with Jesse, all one word. You can also find me under my Gmail, uh, Painting with Jesse at gmail.com. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But if you look for me on Painting with Jesse uh, on uh, PayPal, it's all one word, Painting with Jesse. If you separate the words, you're going to find somebody else, okay? But Becky Lee Poulin from London, Ontario, Canada, you're very welcome. All of you guys that are still with me, look at you guys. Olivia Valdez, my pleasure. Yeah, Anna DeLeon, all one word, Painting with Jesse. And it'll be the same thing on, on uh, Venmo, all one word. But Painting with Jesse at gmail.com is probably the easiest way to find me, okay? Um, but yeah, thank you guys all for being here. Maybe another five minutes. If you guys have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I'm looking at the comments right now. Katie, 12 years old, finishing my painting, and I will post my artwork. Awesome. You're very welcome from Tampa Bay, Florida. Janet Lynn Gare from Kentucky, you're welcome. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. <clears throat> from Littleton, Colorado, Angela, you're welcome. Cherish Longo. Uh, so my email is paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. 
Jesse, if you look at the name on the page, Painting with Jesse, that's how you spell it. Okay, Painting with Jesse, J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Susie Trude says, thank you, Jesse, this has been so much fun. This was my first class with you, but it won't be my last. I have to finish my painting still, but I will send you a picture. Yeah, guys, no worries. If you have to finish your painting, finish it up when you get a chance and send me pictures of your stuff. I'd love to see your, your masterpieces, and I know there's going to be a whole bunch of them. Uh, so, you know. Uh, and I do apologize, it took a little longer than, than expected, but you know, it's going to happen sometimes. Uh, I'm looking at the video he feed here and I can see the difference between the two pieces, right? Them sitting next to each other. Her little shoulder over here is much higher than on the original, but that's alright. That's okay. Guinevere Rayleigh Watson, you're welcome. Amy, <laughs> Amy Carino says, OMG, I did it. Woo -woo. Thank you so much from Whittier. What's up, Whittier? How's it going, Whittier? Whittier's in the house. You got it, Leanne Scheller Phillips. You're very welcome. Thank you for being here. Amy Joe, this was amazing. It was amazing that you were here today. Thank you. Georgina Kago. Hey, my, my sister's in law's on here too. You're painting with us again. Awesome, Lindsay. You gotta show me your piece, Lindsay. Uh, Michelle Durkin, then if you if you can't send, okay, if you guys can't send me your picture. Uh, through Messenger on Painting with Jesse, send it to me. Uh, put it here in the comments, okay? Put it here in the comments. You can put them down in here and uh, you'll be good to go. From Pennsylvania, Scarlet, six years old, and Bri. How's it going, Bri? Or Bree, I think it's Bree. Thank you, guys. Shana Achuf, you're very, you're very welcome. Thank you. Again, guys, I, I, I'm Help me to see all of your pictures, so please send them over. All right, I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. <laughs> Just in touch. Donna Baker, you're welcome. Misha Burmeister, you're very welcome. Everyone have a good night. Don't forget, guys, yep, like the page if you guys want to stay on top of all the cool events that we have on here. Okay, make sure you guys like the page and uh, check out that live tap. You'll see a bunch of cool stuff there. But all right, everyone, finish up your paintings. You can go back, touch up whatever you need to touch up. You know, look at all your little details. Make sure you didn't miss anything. Uh, you know, if you, did a, if you didn't do the stars yet and you want to go back and refine your background, you can add another layer of paint to it. That goes the same for anything on here. If you want to add a second layer to stuff, you can do that. Um, so, yeah, have that. Have some fun with it. And then I will see you guys all very soon. Woo! It's almost 8 o'clock. 20 minutes to 8. That means I painted for almost 4 hours. Is that right? Wow. Crazy. Time flew. All right, guys. Everyone have a fantastic rest of the night. And I hope to see you guys all back here very soon. Have a good night and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.